mind? Are you crazy? I may be an asshole, but I'm a consistent asshole. I think you've been drinking. <laughs> I was going to strike Ollie Baker, and I knew where I was going to hit him. And I did. And I opened him. You're very welcome along. It is a Sunday off the ball special for you. We have two live games, Gloucester against Connacht in the Heineken Champions Cup coming your way very shortly. We will have Brighton Wolves from the Amex with Nathan Murphy and Gary Breen. We'll also review the Sunday papers today. Philip Quinn and Bernard Jackman will be along just after uh, three o'clock. 53106 is the text number. We are at off the ball on Twitter. So... That is the plan. We'll review the Sunday papers between our two live games today. Uh, Nathan Murphy and Gary Breen are at Brighton against Wolves. We'll keep you updated on the old firm at half three. There is a Leicester away to Aston Villa, Newcastle play Southampton and Norwich take on Sheffield United as well. But we are starting straight off the bat with Gloucester against Connacht. We have John Muldoon alongside Neil Tracy. Thanks, Joe, and your timing couldn't be better. The referee, Pascal Gozer, about to blow his whistle. Jack Carty standing in the centre circle, and we are underway here at King's Home. Gloucester against Connacht as Gerbon Grobler catches the uh, kickoff from Jack Carty, who went to the right just outside the 22, and Joe Simpson now picks it up and puts it outside to his hooker, Marco uh, Mar- uh, Franco Marais, and a grubber kick uh, down the down the tram tracks. He's John Porch chase, uh, chase it up and collecting. Uh, beats a couple of players and steps inside and works his way up towards the halfway line. Play now over on the far side of the pitch. Connacht just inside their own half. Dennis Buckley shifts it on and they gain another couple of yards. Quaylen Blade now collects it and puts it out to Jack Carty who snips a, snips a short pass inside and Connacht worked their way up towards the halfway line. Centre of the pitch. Carty now moves it out to the right. Dummy throws to Peter Robb and is uh, tackled up as Quaylen Blade collects the ball and and Connacht have turned it over. Joe Simpson now out to uh, out to his uh, hooker, Franco Moraes. And the kick down, a loose kick in the end. But it's collected easily by Carty, who uh, drops a kick over the top. And the ball drops neatly into the hands of Ollie Thorley, the Gloucester winger, who counter-attacks with it and brings it up towards the halfway line, eventually stopped by a combination of Tom, McCartney, uh, Tom McCarthy and uh, Quinn Roo. Gloucester go left with it. Jake Pelledri now has it. Near side of the pitch, just inside the Gloucester half. Joe Simpson puts it out to Gerbron Grobler. And Simpson now looks to the left but goes right to Cipriani. And Cipriani puts it inside to his uh, number eight, Ben Morgan, who's stopped on the halfway line. Simpson now goes right again out to Cipriani. Neat little pass to the right. As Gloucester have a couple of numbers uh, here, to, here to spare. Simpson now to Moraes. And he's tackled by Tom McCartney. And Cipriani, oh, that's a lovely little kick over the top. Will it bounce no, no, nicely for him? It won't. It's going to bounce for Joe Simpson, though, who tries to offload and doesn't get it away. Grobler now goes left with it. And Gloucester have numbers over here if they can use them. Franco Moraes has it now as Gloucester work their way midway between the try line and the 22 on this near side of the pitch. Whoa, but it's a penalty for it's a penalty for, uh, for Connacht. A turnover ball. Bundy Aki, the man who's got in on top of it after that Gloucester break. And it gives me... Finally, a chance to welcome John Muldoon along. John, a frantic start. Connick finally getting their hands on the ball, though. Yeah, afternoon all. It's, um, I suppose the, the key thing is, at the moment, is uh, Gloucester have found space a couple of times with some kicks in behind um, twice, once up the edge, and then the little chip kick. But um, a good turnover. It's something that's changed in Connick's game over the last couple of years. Um, <laughs> at someone's point just gets knocked in front of us <laughs> um, it's changed in the last couple of years you don't see as many turnovers at the breakdown from Connacht but um, yeah look it, it promises to be a great game um, an interesting stat about this uh, two teams who like to kick a lot so um, backfield coverage uh, will be huge in this Tom McCartney now to take the line out just inside the Connacht half but it's stolen there by Gerbrandt Grobler who knocks it back and Joe Simpson gets his hand on it out to Franco Mostert, the World Cup winner with South Africa. And they work their way back into the halfway line. Simpson moves to the left to Cipriani, who has Ruin Ackerman outside him. And Ackerman gains an extra couple of yards and works his way 10 metres inside into the Connacht half. Simpson now moves right to Cipriani and, Mo- and Mostert. But knock back there, and it's a good tackle. And a crash up the middle by, uh, by uh, R- Rory Atkinson. Mark Atkinson. Joe Simpson now to the right. Oh, and, uh, and uh, Gloucester are away and now oh, on a beautiful sidestep and Gloucester have run it in under the post what a start Tom for Marshall. Gloucester yeah. Tom Marshall and it's back. Tom Marshall the full back got his hands on the ball 
stepped inside on the right wing and moved and danced his way in from the 22 in under the post. A perfect start for Gloucester. They lead here, Connacht, by uh, five points to nil. Yeah, just um, unfortunately, Connacht's lineouts uh, struggled in the first two rounds of uh, of the Heineken Cup, and um, again a four-man lineout under Thrown. And uh, I suppose Gloucester traditionally have an exceptionally good defensive lineout and uh, turnover ball in, in Connacht's lineout, their first real attack platform, and um, Gloucester have punished them. Um, they've got the ball wide a couple of times and uh, put them under a bit of pressure, but um, it's it's a big start for the game for Gloucester, so Connacht need to um, to up their defence. They're, they're getting a bit narrow, and uh, Gloucester have attacked them on the edge quite a few times and got some gain line, so um, they'll need to, to shore up those wide spaces a bit more. Just four and a half minutes played here, and an ideal start for Gloucester. They lead by seven points to nil after Danny Cipriani taps over that routine conversion from straight in front of the post as Jack Carty restarts the game and puts it back down to that right side of the pitch where it's taken by Ruan Ackerman, son of the Gloucester head coach, Johan. Just inside the 22. Again, the space on the outside. But Cipriani's going to step back in the pocket and kick. And he sends that out into touch, a safe touch from uh, Danny Cipriani, and it brings play up towards the halfway line, just inside Gloucester's half of the pitch, right on the halfway line, in fact. And Tom McCartney is going to have a chance to make amends for that early missed throw with a Connacht line out right on the halfway line here on this near side of the pitch. Connacht playing from left to right in this first half. Just to run you through the teams uh, while we can, John Porch at full back for Connacht, Nii Eddie Alokan and, uh, and Carl Godwin on the wings with Bundyaki and Peter Robb in the centre, Quaylen Blade and Jack Carty in the, uh, in the halfbacks. A front row of Dennis Buckley, Tom McCartney and Finlay Bealham for Connacht. Joe Maximu and Quinn Rue make up the second rows with Owen Masterson, Colby Fainga and the returning captain, Jared Butler, on the bench. Oh, oh and a big chance for Connacht there, but it's just slipped out of the hands of Kyle Godwin. It was a lovely skip pass from uh, Jack Carty right on the halfway line, but uh, it just uh, slipped out of the hands of, uh, of Kyle Godwin and it's going to be a scrum ball. Our first scrum of the afternoon for uh, for uh, for Gloucester. Line out, actually, the ball yeah. just went into touch in the end. So uh, the Gloucester team to run you through it at fullback, the try scorer Tom Marshall on the wings. We have uh, Louis Rees Zamet, the youngest ever Premiership player for Gloucester, still just 18 years of age, with Ollie Thorley on the left wing, Chris Harris and Mark Atkinson in the centre with the very experienced duo of Joe Simpson and Danny Cipriani and the halfbacks, Val Rapava, Ruskin, Franco Moraes, and Fraser Balmain in the front row, Gerban Grobler and uh, Franco Mostar, two South Africans in the second row, uh, in front of Ruin Ackerman, Jake Paledri, and Ben Morgan in the back row. There was one change to the Connacht bench as well, Peter McCabe coming in for Matthew Burke, who is sick at the moment, and uh, oh, another good chance here for Gloucester, oh. and oh, just slipped out of the hands and intercepted in the end by John Porch who fly hacks it up the pitch and finds a very good touch and gets it up towards the Gloucester 22 but that was a real let off for Connacht the ball just slipping out of the hands of uh, the winger Ollie Thorley who almost looked to be in but John Porch very quick to react there John again good line up ball um, Sid Atkinson up the middle and uh, they've got it again space on the edge and Porch does really well gets in between the, the pass from Thorley after beating a, a man or two and uh, intercepts and then kicks the ball back into 22 so Gloucester could be under the post again but now they find themselves in the 22 a bit of a let off for Connacht um, they, they are getting a lot of space out wide so Connacht need to get a bit wider good line out D They're and just Quinn, so Rue, Quinn Rue disrupts that line out well and Connacht win the ball back and a, a chance now for them to finally really get on the ball just outside the 22 some big hits as Colby Fahinga <laughs> makes a huge carry there Connacht just outside the 22 centre of the pitch Carty finds Bundiaki who gains a yard or so Re first real attack and platform. Right. Yeah, first real attack and platform for Connacht. So, big play. Owen Masterson gains a couple of yards as Connacht work their way back inside the 22. Carty oh, show and go, and that's a beautiful offload. And running in under the post, it's going to be John throw. Porch, and that's a try for Connacht. What a way to reply for Connacht, John Porch, the former uh, Australia Sevens international, who is uh, making his uh, played seven games so far. He scored his first two tries of the season in the last game that Connacht, uh, Connacht had against the Southern Kings last week. And what a reply that was. Connacht 5, Gloucester 7. Easy conversion to come potentially here for Jack Carty. But I think we are just going to be double-checking this try to see was there uh, a forward pass possibly. We can see it there. Jack Carty just stepping inside. No, that's good. That looks to be flat yeah. from, uh, from Jack Carty. 
and John Porch a beautiful line running onto it straight under the post and Jack Carty slots it we're tied up at 7 9 minutes on the clock brilliant start of the game John yeah 9 minutes in um, two, two line out turnovers equals in try so it's uh, it's one each on that but um, yeah excellent play from Jack offload um, generally you don't like to see your 10 lift his hands over his head and offload but he gets away with it this time um, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's been a really good start. Two teams that defensively haven't been giving away a lot of tries, so i um, surprised to see two early scores. So it'll be um, it's setting up for a great game. I think what we've seen with Connacht this season, John, as well, that they seem to have very short memories. They've started a lot of games poorly, notably that game against Montpellier in the opening round. But, you know, within a few minutes, they've, they're, they have the ability to put that behind them. And as we've seen there in the last few minutes, they've got themselves right back into that game through John Porch's try. Absolutely, and to, to get into the 22 on one occasion and score is a great outcome. So um, it's certainly setting up, setting this game up to be an exciting finish. Um, obviously, Connacht probably do have the slight wind conditions here. That kickoff, um, Kyle Godwin's after fanging it right down into their half. So um, they do have the slight wind conditions in the first half. So. I'm not sure with, with the weather I came from in Bristol, it looks like the, those bad conditions are coming uh, this direction. Yeah, it was a beautiful morning. I was staying in Gloucester last night and I was walking up to the ground and it was an absolutely stunning winter's morning. Blue skies, but now that it's rolled up towards just after one o'clock, you can see a bit of grey moving in. It's gone a lot colder as well. Much colder than it was when we were in uh, Northampton yesterday to watch Leinster against the Saints. So we could be expecting a little bit of rain here later on at King's Home. Blocked down there excellently by uh, by Dennis Buckley. Who would have thought a five foot one prop could block down a ball? <laughs> <laughs> but Gloucester do retain possession. Ben Morgan now with a hard carry, but he's stopped in his tracks excellently. One of the key things this season, probably the last oh, chip couple over of the years. top from Cipriani. Sorry to interrupt you, right. but uh, it's collected well by Tom McCartney, who pops it back. It's noticeable how good Connacht's tackle quality has been and great work by their defence coach, Pete Wilkinson. As I said, there's... Oh, oh and Carty went for the chip over the top there and it was Knock intercepted. On. And surely it, the ball was knocked down. Was that a block or was that a knock-on, John? That's I think that block. was the question because that That's went straight into the hands of Gerbron Grobler and he looked like he was going to be in under the post. That but our referee, Pascal Gauzer, oh, he dropped has it. called it back. Yes, he drops it. So for the viewers out there, it's a chip kick attempt is blocked down but he catches it and drops it so that's the reason why a huge let off Oof. for Connacht there if, if he hadn't attempted to catch it and just batted it to the ground I mean Gerbrand Grobler was straight in there was nobody around him and he had a clear run through in under the, tr- in under the post Yeah, but it's, it's going to be a, a scrum to Connacht 10 metres inside their own half centre of the pitch it's noticeable 10 minutes in um, Cipriani and Jack Carty both of them have kicked the ball quite a lot um, there's that's the third or fourth chip kick we've had. Obviously, both teams are playing with 13 men in the front line, which leaves two in behind. So they're trying to um, trying to exploit that space just in behind. But it's noticeable that's probably five or six open kicks in play um, in 10 minutes, which is, which is quite a lot. Just have a reset scrum here. Connacht have options on both sides here. They've... They've kind of split their lines. Jack Carty standing off to the right of the scrum. Yeah, in a 3-3 setup, obviously, um, scrum's on the Connacht's own 10-metre line, which means that Marshall has to stay um, back for the kick. So advantage at the moment is on Connacht's uh, left-hand side as we look at it. So it's three against two, but the scrum's... And a free kick for yeah. Connacht here. Gloucester pushing early. I think we could just be resetting and going again here in the next couple of minutes. Gloucester a little bit eager to get things going. I'm yeah, sure they're, they're quite e- eager to make a good start. They have been out of out of form badly this season. Lost nine out of their 12 games. But I think crucially as well, what the silver lining, some of the, the people around here are taking, that six of those defeats, they've all been one-score games. Yeah. They've been very much involved in these matches. They've, they've actually conceded the least amount of tries in the Premiership. As you said, I think four... Um, four of those games have been less than five points and then one of those games against Saris was eight points and obviously we saw from Munster game last night even with a weakened team Saris are exceptionally good so it's um, it's it's a what if start of the season if they've got a couple of those wins they could be further up the table in the Premiership and um, again their high cup form has been okay but they just haven't got the results this scrum far more stable Quaylen Blade gets the ball out and gives it to Jack Carty who kicks it deep down into the 22 but it's taken by Mark Atkinson 
kicked it out. It was kicked it out on the full, just a, just inside his 22 when he kicked it. So it's going to be a line-out ball to Connacht, just inside their own half on this near side of the pitch. Again, it's quite noticeable. Connacht are going to all short line-outs in their, in their own half. Um, wing conditions aren't too bad at the moment, but um, it looks like it's going to be a mall set up. And it's taken by Jared Butler, but put straight out, and Quaylen Blake gets his hands on it. And Peter Robb now puts it inside, and knee Adi Alokan drifting in off his wing to take a hard line, but he stopped well as Ooh, Finley Beeler takes, takes a hard carry up to the, towards the halfway line, and Connacht have advantage, and they have a free shot here. Jack Carty puts it out onto the wing to Carl Godwin, who steps inside, and they work their way 10 metres inside the, inside the half. Still advantage to Connacht on the far side of the pitch. Jared Butler now makes a carry. As they move back in, Carty has his hands on the ball and plays it to Tom McCartney, who almost found a gap. Drops it back out to Jack Carty, who sends a grubber right down, but it takes a poor bounce, and we're going to come back for that penalty to Connacht, just inside the Gloucester half, centre of the pitch for that high tackle on Finlay Bealham. Connacht looking a little bit more settled since that try. They've had their hands on the ball a lot more in the last couple of minutes, John? Yeah, definitely. Putting uh, Gloucester under a bit of pressure now, um, holding on to the ball, and um, obviously forced a high tackle. Um, not much in it, just... Finley's going to ground or pumping his legs through and um, just a trailing arm, but there's not much in it. But I think they'll, with the wind, they'll probably look at a kick here. Um, as just as we see Mark Atkinson going off with blood and being replaced by Billy Twelve Trees. Um, I'd say they'll, with the wind, probably take their points. Um, it's on the halfway line, well within Jack's range. But I suppose this will tell us a lot of what what their uh, sights are as he. He's looking at um, at the touchline, so it looks like the, he's going into the corner. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I'm trying to figure out the wind. I can just about feel it. It, is, it has picked up a little uh, yeah. throughout the, the morning and afternoon. The bit I can feel, it seems to be coming across in, in, in towards Connacht. They seem to be playing against it, but Carty has opted not to go for it. He was just inside the Gloucester half, so it would have been probably just on his range. Yeah. But he has found a good touch and moved it onto the left side of the pitch, the far side of the pitch as we uh, as we look at things just inside the Gloucester 22 and an attacking platform here for them to work with. Connacht Small has been one of the success stories. It's probably um, the last four or five seasons, probably more, has, has been exceptionally good just as they... And it's working well uh, here yes. and they've been taken down and they have another penalty advantage just inside the Gloucester 22. Peter Robb now with a hard carry, gains a couple of yards, but he's stopped well with the Gloucester defence. Oh, double penalty and a uh, double penalty there the floor, and, yeah. and Connacht this one far more capable and the fact that it's moved further infield as well where this second penalty has and Jack Carty straight away points towards the post and he's going to have a shot at goal I interrupted you there John you were talking about how good the Connacht Mall had been this season they were working that very very well and got a penalty advantage off the back of that which led to the second one Yeah, I think both Gloucester and Connacht um, both have a lot of strike plays and a lot of um, success from malls. I think um, especially Connacht they put a lot of time and effort into um, special plays and obviously we saw one here um, just in front of us a few minutes ago and um, it's a good mall good platform um, but I suppose the the worry and the caveat to that is that Gloucester's line out D is exceptional so they've got to get their balance right between um, getting their line outs and going for those strike plays versus uh, or Gloucester's line-out, as you said earlier, World Cup winner in there, and he he has a phenomenal strike rate on line-out D. So they've got to be um, they've got to be smart in how they they move him around and make sure not to give give them an in because um, they have a habit of going up inside the 22 and stealing balls. So I'm sure the the analysis has been done well this week, and they'll know that as well. Jack Carty steps up to strike at 16 meters out from goal, relatively straight in front of the post, and the flags go up. And Connacht have their first lead of the game here. 18 minutes played at King's Home. And it's Gloucester 7, Connacht 10. Good start for Jack Carty too, who has probably come back from the World Cup expecting to get back into the team. And Connacht Fitzgerald has been outstanding. So Jack's had a really good uh, 15 minutes. Has that been exactly what both probably Jack Carty and Connacht need? at the moment uh, a viable option and a lot of com- competition for Jack Carty who had that great year last season but I think always the fear with Connick maybe the last few years that there wasn't there wasn't really a solid an option behind him absolutely I think that's always been um, Connick's I suppose work on or um, thing to improve is the squad depth and I think over the last maybe three four years it's got much better um, to have young players coming through and players who are going to be there for a long time is the key thing to any team so um, Jack 
Oh, another great steal from Connacht. Quinn Rue doing well in the line out there, disrupting Franco Mostert and getting his hands on the ball as they over. recover. And it's turned over, though. Gloucester have done well to recover. And they've put it outside to the blind side here. Cipriani finds Ben Morgan. And Ben Morgan gets it out to, uh, to Ollie Thorley, who carries up a couple of yards. Ruin Ackerman stepping in now at scrum half. And plays it out to Jake Paledri. Jake Paledri, who one of three changes to the Gloucester team from last week's defeat against Harlequins. Yeah, he's just back from World Cup duty as well with Italy. Um, had a phenomenal campaign with Italy. Uh, very, very good ball carrier. Um, he's actually a local Bristol boy who's been um, who's came through here in Gloucester and uh, has found himself playing for Italy. But he, he's been exceptional in the World Cup, so I'm sure he's he's trying to make a statement. Uh, we haven't seen much of him on the ball so far this year, but he's ex- or this today, but he's an exceptionally good ball carrier. 22 uh, carries in that opening game, yes. in that last game against yeah. Montpellier, just for example. Like, but that is a loose kick from Conning has played inside. Oh, and, big tackle by and Finley. It's a huge tackle by Finley Bealham, and it's called as a forward pass, so yeah. it didn't even matter to begin with. But Connacht are going to have a, a, a scrum here, just inside their own half, relatively centre of the pitch. But just on Gloucester and we spoke already about how good they are and the, the line of options they have in the second row and a strong back row as well the back Huge. five behind that front row you look at Gerbrand Grobler Franco Mostert World Cup winner Ruin Ackerman who's been outstanding since he joined Gloucester a couple of years ago Paledri who we mentioned and Ben Morgan as well who's a re- an incredibly physical number eight he's having a real um, the last season and a half he's probably came back to life again um, he obviously has English caps and was um, had a few injury his, uh, issues going back, coming up to a short of two years ago, but he's had a real um, lease of life and he's came back to um, playing phenomenally well uh, last season. He, he, I think he was up for try of the year. He scored a, a cracker here um, early in the year, so he's he's having a new lease of life in his early 30s. But Connor's uh, coming under a little bit of pressure there just as the ball went in from Quail, or before the ball went in from Quail and Blade. Fraser Balmain getting a shove on Dennis Buckley. The ball wasn't in, but we are going to reset this again. Gloucester have already given away a, a free kick for an early shove. I think going back to the back row, uh, um, a huge outcome of this game will be determined on how well Connor can deal with that back row. That carrying prowess of Pelledri, Bid Morgan and Ruin Ackerman, if they can stop them getting over the game line, and probably someone who's who's just gone to for the blood, but um, that axis around Cipriani and, and Atkinson, all those loop plays that they love to do, that would be a key factor on how, how the outcome of the game comes because if you can stop that, that axis of five, then you're putting Gloucester under a lot of pressure. It's good scrum by Connacht. And they go to the blind side and Jared Butler gets it away to, to Quail and Blade and, Porsche. and John Porch once again gaining great yards. Yeah, they've done very well. They've Oh, they just got tw- just got bundled touch. into touch just inside the 22. John Porch, though, got his hands on the ball there again. Yeah, he's had a he's great start. He's a player coming in from the sevens yeah. background just this season. He was obviously someone who worked with Andy Friend back in Australia. And he's clearly someone that Andy Friend had had his eye on maybe for a while to bring in. Yeah, he's he's obviously brought in John Porch and Colby Fianga. Um, he probably inherited, as we spoke about before the game, he's inherited most of the squad other than that. So they're probably two of the players that he's brought in. And um, we haven't got to talk about Colby Fianga, but for me, he, he was probably the most outstanding player last year for Connacht. Um, Jack and him, uh, the two of them, but for a new player to come in and to perform the way he did, he was absolutely outstanding. And Grobler wins the line-out just inside Gloucester's 22 as they set up a short mall. Joe Simpson, they're trying to get his hands on it. Simpson having just arrived this season from Wasp, but Connor turn it over brilliantly and Blade gets his hands on it and puts it out to Maximu. Connacht with possession on the 22, centre of the pitch. Peter Robb with a hard carry, stopped well though by Danny Cipriani. Don't say that too often. <laughs> Peter Robb a fairly hard carry of the ball as well, but he's turned over and it's a penalty to Gloucester just outside their 22. Big tackle by Cipriani on, on Pete Robb. Pete Robb's a big, big man. Um, carries really well, big leg drive, but um, Danny Cipriani's after squashing a few, um, I suppose, stereotypes there, thinking <laughs> that he doesn't tackle, but well, that's a huge hit from him. Well, we remember the game against Munster at Thoman Park last year when he did go in and tackle and ultimately was red carded on that yeah. day. He sorted his technique out over the last year or so. He's done something. <laughs> it's a big tackle. Um, two big turnovers, one after the other. As I said earlier, Connacht, it's something that they haven't... Um, in years gone by, Connacht have been hard on the ball, but under Pete Wilkinson, he, he's um, pushed them away from that and filling the field and getting uh, 
getting people in the in the line is the big one for him so they don't actually get a huge amount of turnovers which has probably affected someone like Dennis's book Dennis Buckley's game a little bit because he's he used to be the turnover king line once again is the hands of Gerbrandt Grobler and this time Gloucester do get a mall moving as they head up towards the halfway line far side of the pitch just in from the touch line Ruin Ackerman now with a carry as they move 10 metres inside the Connacht half Simpson moves up but Jack Carty was straight in his face and they've got it moved out wide and yeah. Mark Atkinson now and space to move Torley. with for a space, move, space to move for Ollie Torley and he's tackled brilliantly by Nii Adi Alokan. Simpson now puts it out to Cipriani and Cipriani shifts it back inside to his hooker Franco Moraes and a penalty oh. for Connacht another great turnover <laughs> under a lot of pressure it's the second time in this game this time round Peter Robert was making up for giving away the penalty at the other end of the pitch straight yeah, away getting in over that ball and a chance for Connacht to clear the lines yeah as I said they don't go for turnovers <laughs> 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 that's two in the last three minutes <laughs> um, no the player just got a little bit isolated again bit of uh, space on the outside what we talked about a few minutes ago um, huge maul from uh, Gloucester and a bit of space on the outside great tackle by Nii Aliolikan on uh, Oli Torley who's a very elusive runner obviously he was probably um, a bit disappointed not to make the English squad for the World Cup and then um, just isolated and Ro Peter Robb gets in on the ball big turnover but there are a few worries to be seen as um, as Mark Atkinson comes back in the centre but there, there are a few worrying traits here at the moment Gloucester are getting a lot of uh, a lot of purchase by going wide and um, getting edges on Connacht and you just hope that that doesn't that the lads don't run out of a bit of puff and that they get, can get back in the second half to some of those line breaks McCartney finds Quinn Rue in the line and it's popped straight back to McCartney from Colby Fienga a little bit of a trick move as yeah. the Yellow can moved in off his wing but they only gained a couple of yards off it Maximu now with a, a carry. short carry and gains a couple of yards Oh. Finley Bealham tried to get in over it but they've lost the ball now and it's out to Franco Mostert who clears in Joe Simpson puts that ball outside Pelledri. and shaken off brilliantly by Jake Pelledri we spoke about how hard a carrier he was and he did ever so well to even gain a couple of grounds on that Gloucester just inside the Connacht half centre of the pitch Again, the they moved it wide. to the left Cipriani has numbers and he gets it out to Ruin Ackerman Oof. who shrugs off shrugs off Pete uh, Rob. Peter Robb easily Joe Simpson now snipes down the left hand side and puts it inside to Ollie Thorley who like, skips his way a few yards inside the pitch again, 10 metres inside the Connacht half just as I said this pace on the outside twice have been exploited again so Simpson finds Cipriani and moves it back and Atkinson who's been stitched up carries and puts it inside and Frank uh, and uh, Fraser Balmain with a short little carry and they move the ball right onto the blind side of the pitch and almost moved through there. Louis Reese Zamet, the man who had his hands on the ball. Gloucester with possession on the Connacht 22. Simpson to Cipriani and again it's moved on it back wide. outside to Atkinson. And there's numbers here. And they get it out to Ollie Thornley, who's five metres out from the Connacht line, but he stopped well. And Turn Connacht over. once again <laughs> get in over it, and that's a third Sorry. penalty that Connacht have, to have won from Gloucester inside their own 22. Some brilliant, brilliant defensive work. Bundyaki is getting yeah. up off the ground and also Whalen Blade patting a couple of people on the back. Yeah, big turnover by Bundy. Um, I think <laughs> I was looking at some stats today. Three turnovers a game is what Connacht have been, um, have been getting and they've already had three turnovers in the first <laughs> that's, uh, 27 minutes. That's, that's so. a lot of them. Yeah, so... Um, now, I, I, as I said a few minutes ago, the worrying aspect is ho how they're um, bending Connacht on an edge. They're getting that ball wide and seem to be making 10, 15, 20 metres every time. And it's, I suppose fitness levels now are, are top notch, but you just wonder how, how much more they can extend and get back and keep making these tackles and keep getting these key turnovers because it could be two or three tries um, at this stage. That's the worrying point. A uh, short little break in play here as uh, yeah, Connacht's uh, Kobe Fianga, Kobe getting, Fianga yeah. receives a little bit of medical attention. He put a big hit in that last... Um, he's kind of crouching down yeah. as if he's he a put bit a, winded maybe. He put a big hit in and uh, got back up on the ball and tried to jackal and he, he got uh, squashed. So I'd say possibly knee or ankle uh, may have been squashed in that. And I think he's coming on. Robin Copeland yeah. is uh, coming on to the pitch as we speak. 
He's Fienga just... walking off the pitch, possibly even for a HIA. I'd say there's a there's a medic walking alongside him. He's just back from a knee um, injury. He he uh, did an MCL, I think, a couple of weeks back. So I'm not sure if that if that's something got to it. He's not going towards the uh, change room, so it looks like it might be permanent. I'd say. Yeah, it looks like an injury. Robin Copeland onto the pitch now as Jack Carty didn't really get much purchase on that kick. Sliced it ever so slightly and only brought play up to just outside Connacht's 22, but they do have the throw into the lineout. Copeland had a phenomenal game against Montpellier. It'd be interesting to see. He's probably been a bit disappointed since he's moved from Munster, so you know, big game, just like the Montpellier game, can he can he produce? Because he is a very good player on his day. And a very quick line outside Joe Maxim, who take it from Tom McCartney, and after a short little period where Turn Connacht over. attempted to maul it, they got the ball out, but Pascal goes there, says play on. Oof. It looked like Connacht were in a bit of trouble there, but it looks like they have won the ball back eventually. Quaylen Bla- Robin Copeland just crouching down to protect Quaylen Blade, whose box kicked it up and has got his kick away under straight a lot out. of pressure from Franco Moster, but it's gone straight out into touch. Blade is pleading his case with Pascal Gauzier saying he was inside the 22 but the ruck itself looked like it was just on that line or just outside yeah. the 22 which would mean that the kick itself is coming from outside and we're going to move it back and Connacht or Gloucester have a good opportunity here big attack platform here for Gloucester um, as I said earlier they've they've had quite success um, big success in the start of the year out of their line out so just outside or just inside the 22 Franco Mostert goes up and collects it well and it's broke out and Pelledri has taken it. It's a short little move. And Joe Simpson finds Mark Atkinson who crashes for a couple of yards. Centre of the pitch here. As Gloucester moved to within 10, 12 metres of the Connacht line. Short carry from Ackerman. Gloucester oh, moving right and it's turned over well by Connacht and they, they get it out. It. Maximum out to Peter Robb. Play on is the call. And another oh, three beautiful steps from yeah, Quayle yeah, Blade. Yeah. And he's worked his way brilliantly up to the 10-metre line. Connick still in possession. Maximu now from Dennis Buckley. Short carry. But he's driven back a yard or so. As Quinn Roo steps in to protect. And Blade gets it out to Jack Harty. Who skips it to Bundiaki. And Jared Butler now has been waiting patiently out on this side of the pitch. Carries the ball and wins three, four metres. Bringing it up to the 10-yard line on the far side of the pitch. Maximu now and Robin Copeland gets his first... His first possession of the game, a short carry. Carty out and Maximu now again. And two, three Gloucester players in on top of it. And Connacht will be doing well if they can rec- if they can retain the ball. They do. That's and smart Carty play. And punches a little kick over the top and it's taken a beautiful bounce and it's run into touch. Quick line out. Just outside the 22, but Gloucester have taken the line out quick. Louis Ruiz Zamet gets the ball out. And a counter-attacking option here for Gloucester brings them up. Tom Marshall. From Tom Marshall. And they're up towards the halfway line. Marshall manages to, manages to scramble another couple of yards. Cip- Cipriani now. Mark Atkinson, just Ben Morgan outside him, but he's ran straight through the middle. Mark Atkinson, he's got Joe Simpson inside him, oh. but he's stumbled. He stumbled himself. <laughs> he's tripped up in a little mole hole in the pitch, I think. That to be And it's knockout. another turnover for Kyle. No. It's not, no. Gloucester retain possession, and they spread the ball wide now on the 22 to this near side of the pitch where Ollie Thorley has it. Simpson gets the ball. A big let off for Connacht if they can come away here without conceding a score. Ben Morgan men in the outside. centre of the pitch. There's men outside. Stepped oh. inside, but it's tackled well by Quinn Roo. Connacht really scrambling in defence here now. Penalty advantage for Gloucester. They have a free play. Ackerman now carries just inside the 22. Ball in the centre of the pitch on the 22. Danny oh. Cipriani. Can't get it. And it's going to be an offside penalty against Connacht. Straight in front of the post for Gloucester, an easy three-point opportunity for Danny Cipriani, but it could have been so much more than three points, John. Yeah. But for a little bit of a, a divot in the pitch. Uh, a great bit of play. Uh, Connacht have the ball in their own half. They turn over, go nowhere. Jack steps back in the pocket. Great kick. Um, finds a great touch finder. Uh, but the old adage, the kick is only as good as a chase. No one chases. Quick throw in. Tom Marshall makes a, a lovely break up the middle. Um, recycle the ball and um, the Red Sea opened 
Oh wow, they're going for the going for the points. Cipriani's turned down and yeah. kicked a goal as Peter Robb is actually still down injured. We might have to wait a minute or so before we get this line out. But the, the Red Sea opens in the middle. Uh, Bundy's backing away and Atkinson goes straight through. Joe Simpson's on his inside. As we saw in the last couple of weeks how quick Joe Simpson is and doesn't give it to him and falls over. So uh, a big let off again. And there's still injury break. But um, again, going back to... Gloucester talking about how they back their mall and they back their line out. They've they took or decided to turn down the three points straight in front of the post and they've gone to the corner. We obviously sensed a bit of pressure that was coming there, and uh, we are actually going to stop uh, stop the clock ever so slightly. 32 minutes played here at King's Home. Connacht do still lead by 10 points to seven. John Porch's try cancelling out one for Tom Marshall, and a penalty on top for Jack Carthy is. Franco Monster wins the ball and gets it back and Gloucester a set of a mall penalty advantage coming here but that mall is moving more and more towards the try line they have it at the back Joe Simpson trying to get his hands on it it's a penalty advantage and the penalty has been given now yeah a little training ground move Chuck, um, Monster goes to the front chucks the ball back to um, a pod set up in the middle and they get some goal forward and Quinn Rue's been um, being penalised for being in from the side and then uh, tries to sack it and Cipriani taps that easy as you like straight back into touch five metres out another big opportunity for Gloucester key key moment of the game last ten minutes uh, just or seven minutes before half time this, uh, this would be a huge let off for Connacht if they can get out of this and we saw how quickly that mall moved when they did get it set up Again, Moster comes to the front and takes it, and they're going for a, a traditional setup this time. Taken down, but they do move again. Is it Fraser right. Balmain who's got towards and has he got over the line? Pascal Gozier is looking at it. He wants to see. He wants to see with the TMO, I think, or check with his assistant referee before he makes the decision. It looked like Gloucester got over the line at the very least, and we are going to go to the TMO here to see have Gloucester got their second try of the game. Danny Cipriani is the ball in hand. He's walking back towards the 22. He looks confident enough that he has got it. And he is going to be taking a conversion in the next minute or so. But we just wait and see now. Did Gloucester get their second try of the game? Did they get that ball grounded? We've yet to see the replay, but it looked in real time that he got there. Oof. Yes, looks like that way. Oh, he might have dropped it. Oof. <laughs> it's a tr it's a t it's a tough one. Yeah. We're looking at the screen in front of us. There was an arm reaching out towards the line as that uh, that mall dropped to the ground. We're a long way from the screen. Yeah, he's dropped it. And he's dropped it. No try in the end. Huge let off. Another big let off for uh, for Connacht. <laughs> and there was no penalty advantage coming there. No scrum collapsed. So Connacht are going to have a scrum here and a chance to clear the lines five meters out from the try line. Danny Cipriani is. Looking up at the big screen, he can't understand it. He uh, he fell a fraction short and tried to um, tried to reach out, and the ball dislodged just before the line. Oh, literally millimeters before the line, uh, he ends up dropping it. Oh, that's a huge let off. And I think the weather is starting to move in towards King King's yeah. home. The floodlights are on. You can see shadows on the pitch. It's been following me. It's been following John. We're only. <laughs> At half past one in the afternoon, but it is just, getting very just as dark. Our notes scatter everywhere. It's getting very <laughs> dark and windy in Gloucester. Yeah, the wind seems to have turned a little bit. As well. It looks like it's definitely in Connacht's favour now, but then I look down here to the other end of the pitch and it's swirling down there, so it's hard to know. Well, my logic is my notes seem to be blowing to the left, so that's <laughs> that's what that's how I'm trying to work it out. Connacht win the free kick off that scrum. Another early shove from Gloucester. The third of the game they've given away. Yeah, they've had a few injuries up front. Ruskin's just back, and um, their South African prop, whose name escapes me at the moment, um, got injured in the in the, um, the Premiership Cup against us. He's obviously uh, international for South Africa. He's he's been blighted with injuries. He's their big signing last season. Came injured, got injured again, and then was back for pre-season and got uh, injured in a scrum against uh, Bristol early in the year. So, And, the, and the, the rain is now swirling around King's home as that free kick was put into touch from Jack Carty 10 metres inside Connacht's half. But Gloucester had the throw in and Joe Maximo looks to have got his hands oh, on it and Connacht have turned it over brilliantly there. 
Maximu it was who got in and wrapped himself around Ruan Ackerman in the mall and eventually it went to ground and Connacht are going to have a scrum here five minutes to go before half time Joe Maximu has had a good start to the game he hasn't played much for Connacht obviously he signed from the Lens, or sorry, the Leicester Academy I should say um, he's he's been in the in the system now for probably the bones of 18 months and it, this is his probably biggest game for Connacht just as the rain really starts to come down now um, but he's had a good start to the game he's, he's played really really well I'm, I'm not a weatherman, but I'm, I'm assuming the rain goes the same direction as the wind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it does look like it's moving left to right now at this stage. I think it's swirling around the place as we wait for this scrum to, to take shape. Six metres in from this near touchline. The Gloucester fans not happy. No. As Connacht slow things down a little bit and just take the momentum out of Gloucester's game. Absolutely. Uh, it's good, good uh, game management by Connacht at the moment. There's just over... Uh, two and a half minutes sorry three and a half minutes to go and um, they've they're inside their own 20 or sorry just outside their own 22 and um, they don't want to be doing anything stupid here going in just before half time they've got the they've got the lead and they don't want to relinquish that a win here this afternoon would be absolutely hugely important for Connacht heading into the uh, the return game against Gloucester next week as that Big scrum is a complete yeah. mess and in the end, it looks like it was Finley Bealham who on this near side got the, got the right shove up and Pascal Gozier points across to this side as well. It was Finley Bealham who got the better of uh, Val Rapava Ruskin and Connacht have won a penalty here. 15 metres inside their own half yeah, and a, a big, chance to move the ball a little bit further up the pitch. Big scrum. Um, Finley locked it down this side and um, th they've just popped up a little. And yeah, they've popped it up. So B Big call. It goes, it goes now from um, mentality switches from trying to get to half time to try and get a score just before half time. They're on the 10 meter line, win behind them. Um, I'm sure they'll have some sort of a trick play up their sleeve now to try and try and get a score just before half time. Anything would be good, especially if this win continues the way it is. And a few boos ringing around as Quinn Rue receives a bit of treatment. The Gloucester fans think this is another bit of a, another bit of a play to run down the clock. The clock has stopped, though, so it's not going anywhere. No. Time is standing still. As Quinn Rue hobbles his way back up towards this line-out. On Finley Bealham, though, won the penalty at the last scrum. Not the biggest man in the world, Finley, but he seems to be a very underrated scrummager. He's a very, very good player. Um, really good hands for a tight head. Uh, exceptionally fit for a tight head and can scrummage. So what more do you want, really? <laughs> um, he, he's probably not the biggest, but he, um, he does really well for for what he is and um, he's really been the cornerstone of Connacht's pack over the last couple of years um, Tom McCartney Dennis Buckley and himself have been a phenomenal combination for a long time now Maximu won that line out under great pressure from uh, Franco Mostert and they get the ball wide now move it quickly and it's John Porch who takes it as, as Nia Eddie Alokan moves his way out onto the left wing a step back inside and Peter Robb has his hands on it oh, and Connacht up towards penalty. the 22 but yeah. we're coming back for a penalty here Connacht had the advantage and I think it might have been for contact in the air with uh, with Joe Maximu. Yeah, Franco Mostert was was right on top of yeah. him. Um, it's something that the the referees are highlighting now. It's been um, s certain teams have been very dangerous in the air, and it's uh, it's come to fruition over the last couple of weeks and months. But yeah, you'd see clearly played in the air. Um, Connacht had a little trailing ground move. They're unlucky not to break through there. So they're uh, they're certainly both teams are are launching very well off their lineouts and trying um, trying to come up with little plays to try and break down the D. Um, it's interesting, both teams playing 13 men in the front line, two in the backfield. If these conditions stay the way they are, that might change because I think kicking will become um, a little bit more to the fore in the second half. Um, it's been an exceptionally good and attacking first half, but with conditions looking like they might deteriorate, it'll be interesting to see does, does the kicking game become more prevalent in the second half. And with a minute to go in this first half, Jack Harty is going to have a crack, I think, and try push this lead out to six points. It's going to be a difficult kick, though. 40 metres out and probably over towards the uh, the right uh, at the near touch line. Yeah, on the 15 metre line, it's well within Jack's range. Um, I think confidence-wise as a kicker, he, he's been very, very good. Um, that's probably the biggest aspect of his game that has improved. Jack's always been... Um, a really good footballer but this is probably one area that's let him down in the past but in the last 
two years um, he's gone from being um, someone that you um, someone probably in the 70 percent to up around the 80 percent but it's still a continued work on for Jack but um, the confidence he's in at the moment you'd be hoping he, he might slot this and with time ticking away 39 minutes and 25 seconds gone it's likely to be the final play of this uh, of this first half as Jack Carty places it on the tee and takes a step back Connacht leading here at King's Home by 10 points to 7 um, there's about 20 seconds left here and Jack looks like he's gone through his routine quite quickly if I was out there I'd be telling Jack to take his time <laughs> because um, he's going to kick this and he and this steps is, it up now and yeah, there's going to be time to I go again I don't think he's connected well but no, no it's drifted to the right and wide and with five seconds left in this first yeah. half we are going to have a uh, we are going to have time for for one last play a 22 dropout to uh, to Gloucester Danny Cipriani yeah I'd have been I'd have held on to the ball myself for probably 20 or 30 seconds and then give it to Jack for his routine because obviously this when he started his routine you could tell that he was going to you actually can't do that he's kicked that ball he's kicked that straight yeah. out and that is going to be yeah. scrum that is going to be a scrum Connox <coughs> yeah. Danny Cipriani not yep. on top of his rules kicking the ball directly into touch from that 22 yeah. dropout can't do that and Connox now they are going to have possibly one last free shot almost yeah. to get a score Big, on the board good good opportunity here for Connacht scrum 22 metre line uh, right in front of the post big mistake by Danny Cipriani some of his he's experience should not um, should understand the rules you can't kick the ball dead um, off, a, off a restart like that you have to hit the floor um, so yeah, and a if, huge huge opportunity here for Connacht and if Connacht are to get a score off the back of this as basic <laughs> an error as that that is going to be a huge factor for them going into the into the changing rooms and it's going to be a sucker blow for Gloucester yeah Quillen Blade feeds the scrum no movement in the scrum uh, Copeland gets his hands on it he's actually moved to number 8 and Jared Butler uh, on the flank John Porch now drifting inside as Connacht move the ball towards this right hand side of the pitch just inside the 22 Jared Butler standing out at first receiver it's and Owen Masterson now gains a yard or so on the ground it's noticeable Blade puts it out to Carty sorry to interrupt John yeah it's noticeable Connacht off the touch line with 13 men in the front line they're doing a tip play so ooh. oh and Jack Carty's hit brilliantly there by by Gerbrand Grobler and a penalty for Gloucester. What a what a, a turnover that was. Jack just a little Franco bit. Franco Mostert, I yeah. should say, was the man who made the tackle and just drove straight through Jack Carty. It was it was almost like he was trying to tackle a player probably a yard behind Carty. He just went through him so much and that one is put straight into touch by Danny Cipriani and we are going to have time for yeah. this line out as well. Uh, I was just going to say that it's noticeable Connacht obviously Gloucester with loads of players in the front line they're hitting that first man who's in pushing that pass on to a pre-latch to try and get some goal forward off the touchline which has worked quite well for them but Jack just in two minds dummy to give the pass held on to it and got smacked by uh, Mostert who's, who's had an exceptionally good game he's uh, been one of the high standouts for oh poor line out but Gloucester do retain possession Cipriani gets it now and Mark Atkinson back to Cipriani and Gloucester using to spin it out wide Louis Rees Samet now as Gloucester bring it up towards the Connacht 22 on the far side of the pitch, Cipriani oh, to his loose head prop, Val Rapava, Ruskin who knocks on and Connacht are going to counter-attack again we're going to have one last play, it felt like half time should have been about 5 minutes ago but here we are, we're still going Connacht 10 metres inside their own half ball on this near touch line and Nia Yadiloka oh. takes the smart <laughs> option and kicks it into touch and almost takes the head clean <laughs> off the assistant referee who got out of the way very quickly Adioloka at point blank range only a yard or two away from him booted it into the touch and uh, the assistant referee did very well to get out of the way but that has brought up the half time whistle John and Connacht leading 10 points to 7 after a pretty decent first half what, yeah. have, your, what have your thoughts been? Yeah it's, it's been an exciting uh, first half both teams willing to play uh, rugby both teams wanting to, to chuck the ball around um, from Connacht's point of view probably a bit fortunate to go in 10-7 have played some good rugby but um, Gloucester, when, when they do get to the edge and attack them out wide, they seem to, to gain yards and get um, a bit of go forward. Uh, the, as we talked about, we probably haven't seen um, a huge amount of the, the Gloucester pack as of yet. Um, Russ, or sorry, um, Ackerman, uh, Pledry and Ben Morgan haven't had a huge amount of ball in play, which is it's great for Connacht. Um, but 
saying that on the flip side when Connacht have had the ball they've also looked dangerous and uh, both lineouts are failing a little bit we've had a couple of messy lineouts both sides which has obviously led to turnovers and ultimately led to two tries on either side but um, we're in for exciting second half I think What's the message going to be from Andy Friend obviously it looks like the, the rain has died off but it looks like I mean it could appear again at any stage it's very grey sky ahead of us Connacht will have a lead going into the second half just about three points that they haven't really hit their stride yet are they going to be the happier side I think both teams probably a few too many turnovers each side which is struggling to get both teams into the game I think both um, if you're in both dressing rooms you'll, you'll be trying to say look after the ball try and um, make sure that uh, the rooks are cleaner and just um, stop the, as many turnovers obviously both sets of forwards will look to the line out and try and see if they can get clean ball there but I think from Connick's point of view kick chase and just filling the field a little bit more on the edges will be the key one there while Gloucester will be thinking let, let's hit hit close and try and get wide early and try and um, exploit that space and try and get um, Torley and them on the pay, on, on the ball out wide I suppose the, the concern you'd have for Connacht is if they continue to get those uh, breaks on the edge will the defence still be there in the, the 70th minute will they start to tire and that's that's what you've got to worry about but um, I think the key message is Connacht will be spread the field a little bit long, uh, wider fill those edges and then it'll be the opposite from Gloucester will be trying to attack those edges so whoever does it better How do they go about actually filling those gaps out wide is it just a case of spreading yourself a bit wider? obviously they're the go forwards they're probably trying to stop the go forward if we were analyzing this team in, in bristol we'd be talking about stopping the back row and the threat that's there and stopping atkinson and maybe they've they've overplayed that and probably been a little bit too tight so maybe spread those um not too much because you don't want to give those ads go forward but you want to spread a little bit so that we see a lot of the time connick's last man is standing on the 15 yard line when the ball is coming from the opposite side and Ultimately, they're getting soft tackles on the outside, which is leading to conceding yards. So, if we can, uh, if Connor can spread the field a little bit more and get more people in the 15-meter channel and stop stop those yards, then they're in it for a great chance. Um, I think it, it could be quite low score, and just looking at the conditions, it, it doesn't look too bad now. But um, this is what I suppose the stats will tell you that Gloucester don't concede much. And um, I looked at an interesting stat this morning. I think they haven't conceded a try in the last 20 minutes in the Premiership. They have, obviously, in the Heineken Cup, so they've, they've, um, they've been exceptionally good in their defence, and Connacht, as we know, have been really good as well. So 10-7 um, and a half time, will we see a high-scoring game? Possibly not, but it's been exciting so far. And more is coming the second half. That's where we'll leave it for now. Connacht leading here by 10 points to 7 at King's Home at half time. John Porch's try and a penalty and a conversion for Jack Carty getting them a three-point advantage. Having started disastrously, Tom Marshall running in unopposed in under the post to get Gloucester up and running just four minutes into the game with Danny Cipriani converting. A very tight second half awaits us here at King's Home though, but until then we'll go back to the studio and Joe Malloy. Off the ball on News Talk. The countdown to Christmas is on this weekend on News Talk with Crescent Shopping Centre Limerick. Open today, 11 to 7. Crescent Shopping Centre Limerick, the centre of Christmas. Take comfort in a Citroen van that works as hard as you. And is designed so you enjoy the drive. Take comfort in choice. There's every size and style you need. And take comfort in brilliant offers. With a great range of scrappage incentives when you trade in your old van for a brand new Citroen. Take comfort and take a test drive at your nearest Citroen dealer or find out more at citroen.ie. Citroen. Business users only. Terms, conditions and eligibility criteria apply. It's where you make it. There's no place like it. It's where the heart is. It's home. And if you're a landlord who rents out one or more homes, you must register your tenancies with the Residential Tenancies Board. It's the law. If you delay, you will be liable for late fees. You can register now online at rtb.ie or by post. For more information, just visit rtb.ie. Millionaire Raffle is back. Over 4.6 million euro in prizes will be won on New Year's Eve, including one guaranteed millionaire and over 6,000 cash prizes. With our best odds ever, you can win it. Cool. Your half-brother can win it. Excellent. Your karate instructor can win it. Aye. Your granny who's learning ukulele can win it. Oh, dear. Even your opera singing neighbour can win it. Yeah. 
Limited tickets available. Pick up a ticket in store, in app, or at lottery.ie. Gift responsibly. Have we simply had enough of this government? In this week's Sunday Independent, the final days of the doll that wasn't there. In living, what really happened when the stars came out for Barry Egan's glamorous Christmas party? Rachel Allen's new ideas on Christmas baking? Lucinda O'Sullivan picks the best spots for festive whining and dining? And how to make the perfect Irish coffee? Plus, Kevin Myers talks candidly to Neve Horan about accusations, repercussions, and years of sleepless nights. The Sunday Independent, the complete read. Pack of salt and vinegar, please, mate. What do you reckon? Big game, eh? Trust me. They'll be dropping down that table faster than you get through those salty snacks. And you can have that one for free. Thanks, Mr. Barman. But the only thing we want to see this season is the latest odds you get when signing up with Betway. Come on, it's hunch time. Heed your hunch and sign up to a Betway account online or through the app. 18 plus, bet the responsible way, Louis.net. Are you looking for a new phone and want to know you're getting the best deal in town this Christmas? At Carphone Warehouse, we've got exclusive deals you won't find anywhere else. Get the Samsung S10e for free and get 110 euro cash back. Yes, that's a free phone and 110 euro in cash. This offer is available on a 40 euro a month plan with Vodafone, but only when you switch at Carphone Warehouse. Get into one of our 81 Carphone Warehouse shops near you. T's and C's apply. Offer subject to availability and 24-month contract. Legendary global music icon, Diana Ross. Live at the Royal Hospital Kilmano. Friday, June 26th. Subject to license. Tickets 125.25 are on sale now. May be subject to fees. Diana Ross, live. Presented by Aiken Promotions in association with Pod Concerts. I started working for Frank Minna, Private Eye. Motherless Brooklyn, directed by and starring Edward Norton. There's something going down, and it's big. With Bruce Willis, Alec Baldwin, Willem Dafoe, and Gugu Mbatha-Ra. Power is knowing that you can do whatever you want. Critics are calling it an instant classic. A fascinating and gorgeous crime thriller. If you threaten his work, he will destroy you. Nothing short of a masterpiece. You above the law, at it? No, I'm just ahead of it. Motherless Brooklyn, in cinemas now. Certificate 15A. Switch to Air Broadband this Christmas and get Amazon Prime Video on us for a whole year. Enjoy thousands of movies, TV series, Amazon Originals, and the Air Sport Pack on us. With unlimited broadband for just $49.99 a month for life. Call 1-800-500-300, go in store, or visit air.ie. Air, let's make possible. New customers only, 12-month contract, subject to availability. Bundle activation fee may apply. For full details and terms, see air.ie forward slash prime video. The new place to buy Peugeot in South Dublin, Sandiford Motor Centre. More Irish drivers than ever choosing Peugeot. Test drive the award-winning Peugeot 2008 and 3008 and the seven-seater Peugeot 5008 at Sandiford Motor Centre. The new home for Peugeot in South Dublin. On the first day of Christmas, Wilson's Auctions gave to me Luxury goods, designer clothes and shoes Smartphones and laptops, cosmetics and a 50-inch TV For real bargains this Christmas, including cars Check out the 12 auctions of Christmas at Wilson's Auctions Exit 2 on the Nace Road and wilsonsauctions.com Discover the Bosch Laundry Range at Power City Achieve perfect washing results thanks to the Bosch Intelligent Dosing System, IDOS Now with a free 5-year warranty for more information, go to powercity.ie or call in store today. Off the ball. This, this is News Talk. Carty show it go, and that's a beautiful offload. And running in under the post, it's going to be John Porch, and that's a try for Connacht. What a way to reply for Connacht. John Porch, the former uh, Australia Sevens International. Yes, indeed, half time at Kingsome. Things are going very nicely for Connacht. They lead Gloucester by 10 points to 7 at the break. We are potentially looking at a clean sweep for the Irish provinces this weekend in Europe. Leinster, brilliant yesterday, 43 points to 16 win away to Northampton. Munster beats Saracens 10 3. And then John Cooney, who else these days? Late penalty earned Ulster a 25 24 win over Harlequins. So, so far, so good for the Irish provinces in Europe. Bernard Jackman. We'll have some thoughts on that. He's in our paper review up after uh, the second half at King's Home. Philip Quinn will join him. No doubt the FAI scandal really will be talked about at 
length and then we'll have Premier League action for you half past four Brighton against Wolves is coming your way in the meantime action getting underway at two o'clock includes Ballyboden St Enders up against Air Oge of Carlo that's in the Leinster Club Senior Football Final throws in at O'More Park in Port Leash the winners face Kilku in January the Ulster Champions and also getting underway three o'clock we have an old firm League Cup Celtic going for a fourth in a row they play Rangers things very tight between those two in the Scottish Premiership just two points separating Celtic and Rangers after 15 games Celtic with their noses ahead and in the Premier League we have a few different games kicking off at the moment including Leicester trying to close the gap on Liverpool back to eight points we have Aston Villa against Leicester we have Newcastle against Southampton we have Norwich against Sheffield United we'll keep you updated on those games Manchester City of course remain 14 points off Liverpool after losing yesterday at home to Manchester United Ole Gunnar Solskjaer here asked if uh, that was the best performance from his Manchester United team since he took over if you consider who we're playing against and where we're playing and yeah I think so I think it's uh, it's a team we're playing against a team with some top top players and uh, they're going to create chances against any team and uh, but I think we also uh, we we uh, we did our best to make this an entertaining game because the chances we created were massive. Ole, can you just say what it means to you personally to have beaten a Jose Mourinho team and a Pep Guardiola team in five days? <laughs> Three days. <laughs> <laughs> we, d- we don't have the amount of recovery that these two teams have had. Uh, we've, we've suffered through... Uh, but the, uh, seriously, them 24 hours less recovery, it's hard. It's. It's if you look at it, uh, the physical output that these boys put in, um, them 24 hours is is a big big advantage, and you can see that towards the end today. But personally, I'm just pleased for the boys because that they get confirmation on the direction we're going. That we are we do look like a Man United team, uh, and that's the big thing for me. Is Fred becoming the player you hoped he would be? Arguably, man of the match today. He took the ball. He's playing against Kevin De Bruyne, who's uh, probably the best player in the league. And uh, he, I thought it was excellent, yeah. And it's, so, it's great to see him, because the boy deserves it. He's, uh, uh, but when you get a run, when you keep uh, the team together, Scott, Fred, uh, they've made a great partnership. Yeah, uh, Oli, hello. Yeah, hi. Hi. Uh, Oli, uh, obviously a couple of incidents there, one involving Fred. He, we, we appear to be hit. Is he, well, yeah. First of all, is, is he OK? And has he said anything about that? And also, secondly, there's obviously um, another incident that's, uh, that's been highlighted of, of, of possible uh, uh, racial kind of yeah. uh, gestures against, um, against your players. So yeah. what, what, have you got any comment on that? Yeah, Fred and Jesse were in the corner, taking a corner, and I've seen the video heard from the boys we keep talking about it every bloody week sorry it's uh, but he's been caught on camera he's he, he should in my opinion never be allowed into a football ground again and I've seen a video um, unacceptable so I'm sure the city and uh, the authorities will deal with it because that's we keep as I said we, we keep talking about it every week and it doesn't stop un- unless we uh, it'll have consequences. No, it's very true. It comes up in the paper review as well. We'll do that with Bernard Jackman and Philip Quinn after the second half at King's Home. And then, of course, we do have Premier League action for you. Nathan Murphy alongside Gary Breen for Brighton against Wolves, which kicks off at half past four. In the meantime, though, let's see if Connacht can keep this going. Teams are starting to come back out at King's Home. Gets, let's get back over to John Muldoon and to Neil Tracy. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Second half, almost ready to get going here at King's Home, where Connacht lead Gloucester by 10 points to 7. Before they do, though, just a reminder, our latest off-the-ball roadshow in association with Heineken Rugby Club, almost sold out. It's happening next Wednesday. We're going to be at the Galmont Hotel in Galway. Will Green will be there, Connacht's Andy Friend and Tiernan O'Halloran, and Galway legend Cyril Farrell also. Tickets almost gone. You can get your hands on some, though, at offtheball.com forward slash events. That's all with thanks to Heineken Rugby Club. Visit drinkaware.ie. And remember, this is an over-18s-only event before you buy your tickets. 
Pascal Gauthier's whistle has blown. Danny Cipriani has kicked us off straight down the throat to Quail and Blade, deep into the 22. Neil Tracy here alongside John Muldoon, former Connacht captain at King's Home, as Connacht look to get their second win out of three in this Heineken Champions Cup pool. They lead Gloucester by 10 points to seven. As Gloucester take possession and Joe Simpson gets his hands on it and puts it out to Mostert, who shifts it along and Gloucester move their way up towards 10 metres inside the Connacht half. Cipriani left-footed drives a kick and skidding, oh, on that, kick. skidding on that greasy wet turf the, after the, the rain we had at half time. And it's a beautifully judged kick right on this near touchline. He's drilled that down right inside the five metre line. Connacht will have a line at five metres from their own try line. And a big one to defend there. Brilliant kick by Danny Cipriani, John. Yeah, noticeable that Connacht's defence a lot wider. Um, none of that space that we saw in the first half. Cipriani gets his eyes up, spots the space in the corner. Excellent kick. Big pressure now, line out in the uh, Connex 5. And they've gone for a short line as well, just three players. Oh, and they've worked that brilliantly into Owen Masterson's, Ma- Owen Masterson's hand. No jump needed as Owen Masterson ran to the, the front of the line out. The decoy is moving towards the back and back into the hands of Tom McCartney. And Connacht have moved this up now to towards the 22, but German Grabler almost got in on it and disrupted things. Connacht retain it. Quaylen Blaze looking to move it back to uh, to Carl Godwin who Godwin's with his left foot is going to the, drive it up this touchline Carl Godwin being in the team it does it does give them the second kind of the second option of a first receiver yeah he, he's prob- he's playing out of position at, uh, on the wing he's obviously a, a centre by trade but um, he's been probably I said earlier that Kobe Fianga um, was exceptional last year but Carl Godwin was also very very good but that wasn't a great kick um, just skinned off the edge of his left foot and Connacht retain, or Gloucester retain position, possession off that line-up. Mark Atkinson with a strong oh, carry, bring them up towards the 22. Jared and Butler. a brilliant turnover. Jared Butler getting in on top of things again. And for the fourth time in this game, Connacht have come away with a penalty. Not quite in their 22 this time around, just outside it, but in equally as dangerous a position. That was brilliant from Jared Butler and a good chance for Connacht to clear the lines. Yeah, they've completely blown me out when I said that they don't uh, <laughs> they don't contest the ball anymore on the ground. They've got four turnovers in the game. Um, no, it's a great technique. Ball, uh, his body completely over the ball, really good. And um, the, the attack, or, or it stifled the Gloucester attack. Atkinson poked his nose through. Jared Butler's there before the uh, support. And Harris, the 13, can't get him off the ball. And Jack Carty drove that penalty up towards the halfway line on the far side of the pitch. Maximu taking the line out and Tom McCartney popping it inside. Ooh, that looked, forward. That looked yeah. forward and it has been called forward. Tom McCartney just throwing a little pop into Peter Robb who was coming in at a hard angle. But the ball, it was straight in front of us as we were looking at it. It did look like it was travelling forward. And Gloucester are going to have a put into the scrum here. As we look at it on the replay in front of us, yeah, it just about did go, did yeah. it? Yeah, it was forward. He, he, yeah, definitely. <laughs> he, tries, he tries to be a bit too casual with it and um, tries to distinguish, uh, he tries to make it that he's gone out the back and then just kind of steps away from it. But again, trying to try a training ground move, uh, fake maul, peel around from the hooker and then trying to get uh, Pete Robb into the middle, trying to attack Cipriani, but unfortunately he he had busted the tackle but it was a uh, forward pass this is where uh, Gloucester really um, yeah well it's a free kick for free Gloucester kick. in the first half they were penal- or punished a couple of times for driving a little early this time they've won that from Connacht and Ben Morgan now taps it quickly and goes uh, taps quickly and goes and we're going to come back He's here and it looks it. like Joe yeah. Simpson has knocked on the ball that's a let off for Connacht yeah, as I said, it in the middle of halftime, um, the amount of turnovers from both sides will frustrate the coaches. Uh, the last probably 20 minutes of the first half, we, we failed to see a lot of attack and rugby due to turnovers at the breakdown and just dropping passes, etc. But um, I was about to say in the in that scrum just before that scrum, um, a lot of teams find it difficult to, to defend against Gloucester with um, the plays they use off Atkinson. So a lot of the times they'll hit 12. Cipriani will come around the back and then they'll get a hard runner and they have lots of um, different derivatives off that play and a lot of teams stand off them and give them a lot of time and space and that's what Danny Cipriani wants so I think that's what was coming there but obviously the free kick and Connacht have the ball back now. Is it just that Mark Atkinson has to take so much of your attention? I mean he's 6 foot 5, he's 107 kilos yeah. for his centre, he's 
an incredible physical presence and you know you could be looking maybe a little bit too much at what Danny Cipriani is going to do but and they, they are very creative of what they do but the big thing is take away Atkinson's time and space and a lot of teams don't do that and um, when you allow him to run hard with the ball and then he's got really good hands as well to complement that so they, they put a, te- a lot of teams under pressure off that result in scrum Connacht uh, hit his uh, Carl Godwin who's put them back into the corner with the left hand oh and that's a brilliant off. stolen line out there from Matsumu again from Joe. Maximu again who's had a brilliant game yeah. so far and Connacht bring the ball up into the 22 centre of the pitch here Blade puts it out and Quinn Rue with a carry gaining a couple of yards and moving back in field before he's eventually brought to ground Jared Butler is to the left of Blade but he goes towards the right to Peter Robb and looping around the back is Jack Carty who plays in who plays in Carl Godwin as well he was drifted well in off this left wing the ball now over on the right side of the pitch Blade fishing through trying to wriggle the ball out of that ruck slow coming out Masterson puts it out oh, intercepted Cipriani. by Danny Cipriani and Danny Cipriani looks like he's going to go all the way if he doesn't he has Louis rees to go with him and he pops it off to Louis rees who has run it in under the post and Gloucester are back in front again uh, in this game 18 year old Louis rees his third try of the season in just his sixth game a prodigy for uh, a prodigy for Gloucester rugby this Welsh wonder kid and they have run in under the post Danny Cipriani's interception picked off and passed away to Louis rees who just glided in under the post and Gloucester lead here with a conversion to come by 12 points to 10. Yeah, it's um, nearly a carbon copy of the first half. They've scored early. Cipriani um, goes for the all or nothing play, gets the intercept. Jack will be disappointed um, with that. But yeah, it's a big, big onus now on Connacht to try and come back like they did in the first half. Um, similar to the, probably not as early as the Montpellier game, similar to the the first half here conceding early but um, yeah that, that's a bit of a sucker punch the conversion bread and butter for Danny Cipriani just tapped over the crossbar and Gloucester's lead is now 14 points to 10 7 minutes gone in this second half and Gloucester have a little bit of work to or Connacht have a little bit of work to do now having had a lot of the ball in the opening minutes of the second half they now find themselves trailing by 4 as that kickoff from Jack Carty was sent towards the left and Gloucester with possession now just outside their own 22. Joe Simpson shaping like he's going to box kick and it looks like he will. He has Franco Mostert outside for support as well. He's going to chase that up. And it's a hanging one. It hasn't gone far and it looks like it's dropped straight into touch. Straight out, yeah. Ball back. And it's going to be a line out for Connacht here just outside the 22. Joe Simpson there actually. His first season at Gloucester having had a long career at Wasps over the last few years. Had an absolute blinder of a start to the campaign. Mm. So he has, he's got... Um, he's a very good runner nine. Um, probably, I know he's just kicked the ball day, but if um, if you were to pro- pick out one point about his, his weakness, that would probably be his kicking game mm. and his game management. But as a running nine, he's exceptionally good. Eight, um, eight tries in nine games yeah. so far this season. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's done really well. And obviously... Uh, saw Toulouse a couple of weeks ago where he ran the length of the field. He's he's probably got. Satisfying afternoons with Harvey Norman. First time buyer? Wondering how to get everything done? Don't. Just sit back and watch your house become a home with Harvey Norman's delivery and install. Make it festive this Christmas at Woody's. Get merry and bright with LED lights, now half price. Add some festive cheer with artificial Christmas trees up to 50% off. And deck the halls with all Christmas decorations, now up to half price. Woody's. We're all homemakers. T's and C's and exclusion supply. I started working for Frank Minna, Private Eye. Motherless Brooklyn, directed by and starring Edward Norton. There's something going down, and it's big. With Bruce Willis, Alec Baldwin, Willem Dafoe, and Gugu Mbatha-Ra. Power is knowing that you can do whatever you want. Critics are calling it an instant classic, a fascinating and gorgeous crime thriller. If you threaten his work, he will destroy you. Nothing short of a masterpiece. You above the law, that it? No, I'm just ahead of it. Motherless Brooklyn, in cinemas now. Certificate 15A. All you need this Christmas is carry-out off-license. Make your money go further with our incredible deals on box beers, multi-pack cans and wines from all over the world. Plus our amazing Eastern European selections, such as the fantastic Perla beer range, now in stock. Fill your cupboard for less this festive season. Carry-out off-license. 
Simply better wines and beers. Simply better value. Enjoy alcohol responsibly. Visit drinkaware.ie. Off the ball. This, this is News Talk. Now, apologies for that loss in connection. You haven't missed anything here at King's Home, though. Connacht still trailing uh, Gloucester by 14 points to 10. Almost 50 minutes on the clock with Connacht in possession here just inside their own half. And Jack Carty swings a right-footed kick out and he has misjudged that by, I would say, 10 to 15 metres and put that straight in, not even just into touch, but straight into the stand opposite us. Yeah, we've seen two poor kicks now. Simpson's uh, kicked one dead, which resulted in Connacht um, having a great attack platform. And unfortunately, Caelan Blade at the back of the mall knocked it on and um, the ball's been kicked back off that result in scrum and uh, Jack's just uh, overshot it quite a bit um, so the Connacht now find themselves on the 10 metre line um, the big couple of minutes they, they don't want to give Gloucester um, a good attack platform here and Mark Atkinson now steps inside and he's tackled and put onto the ground just on halfway ball centre of the pitch Simpson gets his hands out as, to, as some Gloucester fans think Connacht might have stepped up a little bit early there and moved into an offside position no advantage played though yeah, we're, we're seeing this again um, outside back screaming for players to get into the wide channels. and Atkinson stepping through a couple of players eventually, though. He's brought down well by Jared Butler, but not after gaining three or four yards. And Garen oh. Grobler now slipping it in front of him. And I think a few players just starting to, to lose control of the ball ever so slightly. The rain has stopped, but it's been on and off ever since probably midway through the first half. Yeah, conditions gr- just getting greasy out there great line speed from Dennis Buckley we saw it just before half time as well where he, he shot up out of the line put that man in the middle under a lot of pressure and um, he's took his eye off it uh, fractionally and he's um, he spilled the ball forward just as we see Jack um, is being replaced by Conor Fitzgerald Conor Fitzgerald probably the surprise package of the season so far for them deputising brilliantly while, uh, while Jack Carty was away at the World Cup with Ireland yeah, he's uh, played eight of their nine games so far this season. It's an interesting um, profile. Obviously, played Limerick Hurlan and well, as a minor, and then um, got let go by the Munster Academy. And Connacht have taken him, and he, he's been exceptional. I've been very impressed with his management, his um, his game management, and how he he drives the game. He, he does kick a lot, which is um, probably something we're seeing a bit more this season from Connacht. But um, he he's done really well and his confidence is flying and a lovely Just skip past oh but it's oh. blown forward it was into the hands of Kyle Godwin who moved his way up towards the 22 and Conor Fitzgerald though threw a skip past beyond Bundyaki into the hands of Godwin I think that's harsh um, but, it's but it, it is forward. forward yeah it is forward but he is he is running with it oh jeez that, that looks a bit harsh yeah it's it's if, you're, if you're looking at the hands, which is what the law is, it certainly looks like those hands yeah. were, were pointing backwards. Yeah. Oof. That is harsh. But going back to Conor Fitzgerald, he, he's been very good. He has kicked the ball more than anyone in the Pro 12, or Pro 14, sorry, um, this year. He's obviously played a lot of game time, but um, Connacht have, have been a lot more, um, using the boot a lot more, and as we saw in the first half with Jack quite a bit. Um, Conor Fitzgerald has obviously kicked quite a lot. I think they tend to kick more off 10 than off 9, um, which is a, a trait with Connacht over the last uh, 18 months. And um, it's probably been um, the weakness of Kieran Marmion and ultimately why he probably wasn't brought on the on the World Cup um, squad is his kicking game off 9. But I think when you've got someone like Conor Fitzgerald who can kick, uh, kick the leather off the ball, it's probably a good thing. Play back underway after a brief little stoppage there as a couple of players receive some medical treatment. 52 minutes played at King's Home and it is still Gloucester who lead Connacht by 14 points to 10. Connacht at a ground as well where they've had a few troubles down the years. It's the, the sixth meeting between these sides in all competitions down the years and five Gloucester wins out of five in that time. I think the the most memorable of those games was that, uh, that Champions Cup playoff in 2015 when went to extra time and after a pretty incredible game Gloucester came away with the victory that scrum there moving forward uh, Gloucester were moving forward but it's been brought back and uh, we're going to have it reset after yeah, the, the scrum wheeled there's been a couple of uh, heartbreaks here um, over the years obviously uh, Johnny May scored a try in the 78 minute um, in a Heine Cup game here um, 
God, it must be 10 years ago. Um, I think uh, when Eric was coach, um, we should have, we probably should have won in, in Galway when we came over here the following week and I think we were winning 9 7 and Johnny May scored late and then obviously that one that you've just mentioned uh, play off at the end of the season and went to extra time mm. it's the only time I've ever gone to extra time in a game and um, again Johnny May broke our hearts with a, a length of the field uh, try so a um, couple of big matches here in the past Gloucester get the ball away from that scrum after coming under a bit of pressure from Dennis Buckley who drove well and that's a lovely little <laughs> lovely little driven grubber down into the corner of the pitch and yeah. sends possession probably 15 metres out from the Connacht's try line but they are going to have the throw into the line out it's, on this near side of the pitch it's noticeable that um, that's two or three times now Gloucester have used this bottom corner um, it's hard to tell up here which way the wind is going but there's a bit of a fall off at the edge of the pitch here and um, they've been putting those grubber kicks into the corner trying to make it hard for Connacht to try and exit obviously smart tactical play keep Connacht inside their 22 looking to looking for them to force a turnover or a mistake just as uh, a couple of changes have been made yeah on it's come uh, Dominic Robertson McCoy and uh, also on the pitch is Ulton Delan Joe Maximu and Finlay Bealham the ones to come off as Quinn Roos spills that ball in the line out and Gloucester retain possession Peter Robb calling players out they're down numbers on this far side of the pitch and Robb makes a good tackle on Moster but Connacht swing the ball out to the left and they have numbers here if they can use them they work their way inside the 22 short carry up and Jared Butler stops brilliantly as Simpson moves the ball back right in towards the centre of the pitch Quinn Rue with a good tackle they go right again to Cipriani and Jake Pelledri now with his hands on it, but he was start starting from a standing position, doesn't gain any ground. Skip ball out. And it's out as far as Ollie Thorley, who's moved out onto this right wing. Drop back inside and Ruin Ackerman, the latest to carry. Gloucester moving from left to right and now back from right to left on this pitch. Hard carry from Ben Morgan, but he's stopped. And they have, a sp they have numbers out here on the right and they move the ball out onto the left side. And driving up the middle is uh, Chris Harris, the Scottish international. And he's stopped, high but tackle. it's a penalty advantage. High tackle against Connacht. Ten metres out from their own try line. And the whistle's blown, and we are going to have the penalty. Gloucester couldn't get the ball back out of that rough. Bundyaki got his hands around it. But the advantage was being played for a high tackle. Ulton Delan, I think, was the man penalised after Chris Harris had worked his way up towards the Connacht line. Yeah, just as I said, obviously... They've kicked the ball into the corner, looking for Connacht to make a mistake. They've dropped it in the line out, and um, talking eight, eight, ten phases later, and it's a penalty to uh, Gloucester again. Like the first half, it looks like they're going to back their mall and go to the corner. Um, interesting again, they've they've gone for the big runners. They haven't made much ground, but ultimately Connacht are, are shoring up that D around the rook. But this there's space still in the wide channel, which is uh, is worrying for Connacht and. They look dangerous and they seem to be getting yards, easy yards on the outside. And Gloucester starting to use their bench now as well. On us come Josh Honeck, 33-year-old New Zealander. Yeah. He's played seven games this season. He's in for Val Rapava Ruskin. Um, probably wouldn't be good as scrummager as uh, Ruskin, but around the pitch will definitely add a little bit more. Um, bit bigger ball carrier and... Um, We'll try and get some, some go forward for them. And he has his hands on the ball straight away. A sloppy line out was eventually retained by Gloucester. But they have been driven back a few yards. They're now probably 15 metres from the Connacht try line. As Simpson gets it out to as it out to Mark Atkinson. He moves it back towards the centre of the pitch. And they call it out right. Ben Morgan with a huge carry. But that's a brilliant tackle by a couple of Connacht players. Stops him in his tracks brilliantly. Cipriani now. And they have numbers out here on the right-hand side. Chris Harris tries to step in and throws the offload to Mark Atkinson, who steps inside. Gloucester now 10 metres from the Connacht try line. Centre of the pitch. Looking to get their third try of the game and push their lead out to nine penalty points. They have another again. penalty advantage. Connacht's penalised once again, and Danny Cipriani is going to take the free shot and chips it in over the top of the ball. Yeah. is run over, no. and it's gone dead. A couple of players, one of the Connacht players and one Gloucester player, both dived for it. Yeah, it, didn't, it didn't look from it didn't look, it didn't look from here like either of them got the ball down and grounded before it went out but we are just going to have a quick TMO check on that whatever the result Gloucester will have a penalty to come back to we're getting into dangerous territory now that's two penalties in a row for Connacht 
Um, I'm sure the referee will have a chat with uh, with Connacht and give them a warning. Let's see, there was a bit of space to spare. And no, no. that looks like a knock-on. I think it was Tom Marshall. Gloucester's first try scorer this afternoon got his hand on it, but it didn't look like he was able to bring the ball to the ground. It looks like he, he possibly bounced it off the ground rather than rather than got any pressure on it. It is hard to see with the. Yeah, yeah just a little yeah. bit far away from this uh, <laughs> from the big screen here. I have my binoculars out trying to look across. Pascal goes there. The ref is uh, speaking to his TMO at the moment trying to figure out what the right call here is going to be. It looks like at least there was the, the final hand was from no a... Try. No try. No try given, but we are going to come back for this penalty. Yeah, I think the referee is going to have a quick uh, chat with Jared Butler. Yeah, he's pulling him to the side now. Um, I'd say that there'll be a bit of a warning here. That's two, three penalties in a row inside the 22. So um, they've got to be squeaky clean here. And the, again, the... Um, the Connacht defence is, is being caught a little bit. That that's they've just done a simple three play around the corner and then flash back with the backs. And um, you'd have to think at some stage they're going to get it right here when they do it because they've 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 got yards on the edge a couple of times and Connacht look like um, they're under pressure on the outsides, just not getting the numbers around. So big call here instead of going to the corner. Obviously the last line it wasn't uh, wasn't fluid and they've gone for a, a scrum. It's a big call, potentially, when there are three relatively easy points on offer here, a four-point lead. I mean, we're talking, what, they're 15 metres out, yeah. probably five metres to the left of the post. So, they're in all in all likelihood, a very easy kick for, for Danny Cipriani to, to take on. Yeah, I think Cipriani um, usually stands behind here. They're, they're not, um, they haven't shown their setup here, but you, he usually stands behind and, and the ball will go to him on one of the sides and he's very good at picking out a pass here, so... Um, usually they go into to Cipriani standing right behind um, they're just moving into position now yeah Cipriani's taking up the space and just not not committing either way to one yeah. side of the pitch until yeah. that ball is in watching the defence uh, so Cipriani and Oli Thorley have both stood behind and he's moved to the right and Simpson puts it out and Mark Atkinson carries it and that's a good tackle that's that play we've been talking about hit, hitting Atkinson with Cipriani out the back Franco great, Master, great it's tackle. another it's another uh, advantage possibly a scrum advantage uh, I think Gauzier indicated there may have been a knock on from a Connacht player in there but Gloucester haven't moved left Danny Cipriani chips it through down the middle and uh, oh, oh and it's bobbled up and it looks like it was Ollie Thorley who almost got his hands on it but it just spilled out of his yellow hands at the last second Connacht. and there is a penalty coming and it's going to be a yellow card here for trying to just spot which Connacht player it was that's been called over Carl it's going to be Carl Godwin who's going to take 10 minutes in the bin three I, I, penalties yeah. given away in quick, in quick succession midway through this second half I'll be honest I didn't see exactly what happened there um, it looked like a, a great tackle by Pete Robb and I, I didn't see exactly and once more they've decided to scrum it down this, this penalty 5 metres to the right of the post the last one 5 metres to the left and Gloucester this time really only 7-8 metres out from the try line yeah obviously man down here now for Connacht in the back line we've no um, left wing so again Cipriani sitting up behind the scrum John Porch at the moment filling that gap on the left wing opposite the try scorer Louis Rees Zamet Cipriani this time opting not to stand behind the scrum, but he has just taken that space out on the left, a yeah. traditional setup from them. And we see how they use it. Ball easily at the back, Ben Morgan has it at his feet. They choose not to not to drive it. It's Simpson goes to uh, the right, and it's an overlap, and it's dived in the corner. And it looks like it's going to be Tom Marshall who's got his second try of the game. And Gloucester putting a bit of daylight now between them and Connacht. They lead by 19 points to 14, midway through the second half, just broken off the back by Joe Simpson, straight outside, and the overlap was created, and Tom Marshall goes over for his second try of the game. Yeah, simple play, but effective 8-9 eight, eight to nine off the back of the scrum, and obviously, Connacht a man down on this side. They've, they've put the full back in there, but um, numbers of toll at the end. and um, It's good by Marshall. He, 
he's had an exceptionally good start to the season and uh, his form continues again with two tries. I think he's the most defenders beaten in the in the Premiership and the Champions Cup so far and um, he's a very elusive runner. And he's a guy as well who's playing for his future. He's in a in a contract year, two years into his deal at uh, no, nothing at uh, Gloucester. No, nothing <laughs> inspires a player much like being in a contract year. Absolutely. But yeah, as you say, playing fantastically. That's six tries now and nine appearances for him this campaign, the New Zealander. Yeah, he's been he's been very very good to start the season. I think uh, in the Premiership alone, he's beaten 20 defenders more than any other person in the in the Premiership. And the gap stays nine points, 19 points to 10. That conversion from Danny Cipriani out towards this right touchline was pulled left footed and nowhere near going over. So Connacht still in with a shout here. 19 minutes, 18 minutes left on the clock, although they are going to be playing the next, the guts of the next 10 minutes with 14 players after Jared Butler's yellow card a couple of moments ago. But Connor Fitzgerald gets us underway and for the first time in probably 10 minutes or so, Connacht are actually in the Gloucester half of the pitch. Gloucester now, continue on the 22. Just a slow couple of phases. Yeah, they're building Simpson the kick now eggs. plays it back to Cipriani, who drives Oof. it low, a daisy cutter across the pitch, oh. and it's gone into the hands of oh. Tom Marshall, who puts it out to Louis Rees Amos, and he's got space inside, and Bundy Aki did very well to get himself back into position. And not quite intercept the ball, but bat it back. And in the end, John Porch got his hands on it, but he was bundled into touch by Tom Marshall, who put that, started off that mini break. And Gloucester are going to have a line out here. So <laughs> Gloucester have set up uh, what looked like a kick exit, um, slowed the ball right down, hit Cipriani, who um, who's tried to do a cross field kick, but uh, one of the Connacht players has put him under pressure and he's hacked the ball, is probably the only thing you could say. If it was a golf shot, you'd say it was. Um, it definitely a, wasn't it was the a kick mulligan. he was going for, was he? <laughs> no, that's not what he was trying to do. He was trying to do. He caught the hosel of his driver yeah. and just a little, a little shank low, but in the end, it worked out okay. It fell into Tom Marshall's hands, yeah, and he's he's kicked it forward, and uh, Gloucester have found themselves uh, just outside Connacht's 22 with their own lineout. And Simpson gets his hands out on, finds a gap, but Conor Fitzgerald scrambles and. After showing Simpson the gap, got back to cover, and Franco Mostert now gets it out to Jake Paledri, who oh. drives through. And Paledri is going to run in here unopposed, shrugging off the tackle, and that is the bonus point try for Gloucester. They have the victory in sight now. Jake Paledri, who we spoke about earlier as being such a strong carrier, taking the ball on just outside his 22, and just bouncing a couple of challenges off him before the, the, before the heavens opened, and he just went straight through to the right of the post. And yeah. Connacht now in big trouble. They trail by 24 points to 10. Conversion to come for Danny Cipriani. Yeah, big play. Uh, Pelledri, as we spoke about, phenomenal ball carrier, exceptional for Italy in the in the World Cup. And um, he's just bounced off Dennis Buckley and um, ran in under the post. Um, Danny Cipriani's chip kicked. That's probably the only thing you could say. He's, <laughs> he's literally just chip kicked it over the bar. It's landed about two yards over the bar. <laughs> Bayern in mind he is straight in front of the post and all of a sudden now Connacht staring into a 16 point gap as they prepare their next substitute Stephen Cairns about to come on for just his third appearance for the province yeah Tom Daly's just came on there as well in the centre former Irish Sevens captain Tom Daly as come on, he's, re he's replaced Pete Robb in the centre as Conor Fitzgerald sends the kick off towards the right hand side of the pitch and Gloucester looking to move it now. They're feeling confident. Chris Arzo, and that's Ooh. a big hit from Bundyak. He was at high. We might be going to the TMO there. And Tom Marshall gets it wide again to Louis Rees who steps inside. But tackled brilliantly by John Great Porch tackle. and brought to ground just outside the 22 on this near side of the pitch. Gloucester really looking confident now with the ball in hand. Aside of having lost five games in a row recently, have got themselves into a good position and they're starting to look like they're enjoying their rugby again. Robin Copeland tries to get in over the ball. Doesn't succeed, and it's out to Moster. He puts it back inside to Ruben Ackerman, who's brought to ground. Gloucester with possession here, just inside the Connacht half, as Danny Cipriani tries to dink a little kick over the top, and the top spin he puts, uh, puts on it has just evaded John Porch, and the ball has dribbled its way down to around six, seven metres out from the Connacht try line on this near side of the pitch. Tom McCartney set to throw in. Although, yep. actually, it's going to be Johnny Murphy he'll be throwing into the line-out because the substitution's just been made. 
Yeah, there's a, a raft of substitutions coming on now. Again, just as we spoke about earlier, uh, Cipriani's using this bottom right-hand corner as we look at it. Um, there's a little camber here in, on the pitch, and um, he's, he's pinning Connacht back, obviously. And two substitutions about to be made as well have been made as well for Gloucester. Franco Mostert has come off the pitch. Ruhr, as has Ruin Ackerman as well to be a huge ovation Gloucester really missed Franco Mostert over the last few weeks or last few months and it's kicked away by Conor Fitzgerald left footed and he finds touch well and the ball's gone out and we're going to have a line out here although as Louis Rissama tries to take it quickly it doesn't work They've really exploited the Connacht's lack of a left winger here and um, they've been ruthless, obviously scoring two tries while Connacht have been down to 14 men. We'll just take a quick break here and move towards our Premier League coverage. There has been a fr the first goal of the afternoon in the two o'clock kickoffs. We're going to go to Carroll Road, see how it is between Norwich and Sheffield United. Derek Clark. Norwich City 1, Sheffield United 0 as the captain Alex Tetty with the goals a corner kick into the box failed to clear Sheffield United back line it fell to Tetty and a left footed drive out into the corner giving Dean Henderson no chance to make it Norwich City 1, Sheffield United 0 and we're still waiting for this line out to take place and while we, while we do that we are going to go to Villa Park as well because there has been a goal oh no, we're not going to go there we're not going to go to Villa Park our line out is ready as the ball is thrown in and it's taken by Gerber and Grobler and Gloucester look to set up a mall just inside the Connacht half. Marshalling at the back now is uh, Callum Braley just keeping an eye on things. He's come on in the last couple of minutes for Joe Simpson. Callum Braley, uh, another Italian international <laughs> actually in this team. Yes, he... Uh, again, um, <clears throat> he's an Englishman but he's qualified for Italy and got capped uh, in the World Cup. And they move the ball back towards the right-hand side. Ben Morgan now, as Jared Butler back on the pitch gets in, or uh, gets in on top of it. And Robin Copeland tries his best to get in there. Danny Cipriani moves it back to Mark Atkinson and Chris Harris, as they try to spread the ball wide. Tom Marshall again in possession. Two tries this afternoon for him as Braley keeps an eye Turn on things, over. but this time finally Connacht have have won a penalty after after doing so well with turnovers in the first half and right at the start of this second half, but finally they have something to, to smile about, a chance to get back up the pitch and put Gloucester under a bit of pressure on this the far side of the pitch, 10 metres inside their own half. Conor Fitzgerald will have a chance to clear the lines. With 12 minutes to go, um, Conor Fitzgerald really needs to get this inside the 22 and uh, get a good attack and platform. I think he stole a couple of yards as well off where the, the mark of that penalty was, but he has kicked it up and... He's brought possession. He's brought play just uh, probably about 13 metres inside Gloucester's half of the pitch. Again, over on the far touchline. And it's going to be Johnny Murphy to throw in the ball. Former Ulster Academy. Johnny Murphy joined from Rotherham at the uh, start of 2018. But he's only played a couple of games for the province. Yeah, very competitive com uh, competition in that place. Um, that hooker with, obviously, Shane Delahunt. Uh, the... Dave Heffernan, that looked like it was high. Dave Heffernan, uh, Tom McCartney, he hasn't seen a huge amount of game time. And Owen Masterson sends it outside now to Tom Daly, who tries to eke his way towards the 22, but they're still probably around 25, 30 metres from uh, from the Gloucester try line. Kearns now to Conor Fitzgerald and Quinn Rue as they go backwards again, losing yards, carry by carry. Bundy Aki tries to, tries to drive them another couple of feet forward. Just going back and forth across this pitch at the moment. Oh, big tackle. I think the momentum has been sucked out of this oh. game a bit. Oh, but that's a beautiful pass. And straight into the hands it of Owen Masterson. And it doesn't look like he's going to have the legs to get to the try line. No, it doesn't. Stop brilliantly. Just one metre out from the try line. Oh, get As Connacht looked to dive over. They've got numbers on the left-hand side, but they chose the short option. Penalty, Penalty advantage. advantage coming. Kearns finds Tom Daly. Try. Who gets his way towards oh. the line. Pascal Gozier is looking to see has he grounded it he hasn't Stephen Cairns is wriggling on his hands and knees trying to get the ball out of there but it's held up is the call from Pascal Gozier and I think Connacht had a penalty advantage you have to say that's white line fever um, Stephen Cairns 
looked like he kind of ran away from Old Masters and he should be going towards him, not running away from Carl Godwin's just back on the pitch. But um, the referee's checking TMO, but Connacht have an opportunity. As, as men, both sides, Gloucester are very narrow and D. They're all in around the rook and uh, someone's picked and go, slowed down the ball and then they've gone out to Tom Daly who's who's had a goal with the man outside him as well. Um, he needed to give that pass. We're still just looking at this TMO review. Pascal Gozair standing in front of the big screen in the, the bottom left corner of this pitch. As we wait. And while we do, there's going to be a change. Chris Harris is going to come off the pitch for Gloucester. As Billy Twelve Trees comes back onto the pitch, he was on in the first half, replacing Mark Atkinson for a... Well, he was getting stitched up. But it's going to be a scrum here for Connacht. That was a big moment in the game. If Connacht could have got a try there, got a conversion... Um, you'd be back to a two-point game but as we stand it's obviously still a three-point game but um, they still would have had a lot of time on the clock with eight or nine minutes to go but um, running out of time here now options to the left and right on the blind side of the pitch Conor Fitzgerald is standing in as a first receiver Tom Daly is actually closest to uh, to Stephen Kearns on the right side of the pitch. There's probably a 15 metre blind side here as Kearns snipes to the left and chose, cho chooses to go himself and reaches out for the line. He doesn't get there as Connacht pile in over the top and try to secure possession. Stopped again, two metres from the line. Yeah, penalty Connors advantage. Looking to pick and go and pick and go and the penalty advantage is there and Kearns gets his hands on it and puts it outside now the Connor Fitzgerald but he's driven back brilliantly. To six big, metres out from the try line. Big tackle by Pelletri. Huge defensive effort by, effort by Jake Pelletri, who's had an absolute blinder this afternoon. Carried by Owen Masterson now, as Robin Copeland gets over and tries to protect the ball. Dominic Robertson McCoy, the latest to carry, as Kearns puts it out, and it's a little bit too high, and Bundy Aki does well to catch it, but gets knocked back quite hard. And Masterson now with another carry. Connock still around six, seven metres out, but we are going to come back for that penalty. I think there was a second penalty advantage there, no arms in the tackle, so they've won closer to the post. We're ten metres out from uh, from the uh, from the try line. Pascal goes here, just letting Jared Butler know there's a couple of options for where he wants to take that penalty. Yeah, they've, but they're they've going to take it the one that's a little bit closer in uh, closer infield into the centre of the pitch. We're just Jared watching the replay here. There's no arm tackle by. Uh, by one of the Gloucester players I can't see exactly who it is so. one more change there as well as Danny Cipriani Matt Banahan to come on jogs off the Cipriani. pitch Matt Banahan to come on for him a very very experienced player the 32 year old 16 England caps to his name down the years tough guy to play against I'd say Matt Banahan have you come across him before he's a big boy back in his bath days <laughs> yes um, we talked about Atkinson being a, a big man and um, obviously uh, Banahan signed here last year from, from Bath who's had a, a long career there but um, he's had a few injuries he hasn't seen a huge amount of game time I think this is maybe only his third game of the season so um be interesting to see probably trying to get some minutes under his belt 8 minutes left here and Connacht still trail Gloucester by 16 points 26-10 is the score at the moment and if they are going to get something out of this game they're going to need it very very quickly another penalty advantage for Connacht comes as they are hanging right on this try line and the whistle is blown card. and Pascal Gauzier is reaching for his pocket and Gloucester are going to be playing the last seven minutes or so with 14 players just looking out to see who is the man going to the bin Ben Morgan as captain is currently up <laughs> speaking to Pascal Gauzier the referees just asked the touch judge which who number is it was and he put out his hands with a gesture as I've no idea <laughs> <laughs> what, ha what happens in that case do, do, Gloucester, me, just, me, me, me. do Gloucester just get to nominate a, nominate a player to, to play without for the last 10 minutes probably the referee whoever's been annoying him the most is going to go <laughs> if I was still playing it would probably be me <laughs> and it looks like he, he does have an idea now he's walking towards the Billy, 12, Billy 12, 12 trees how did you just miss Billy on. 12 trees with that head of blonde hair 
he's not long if on there's, either. If there's one man out there who isn't particularly inconspicuous, <laughs> it's Billy Twelve Trees. But uh, his um, his cameo appearance has been cut short. He's coming off the pitch for the second time this afternoon. Billy Twelve been, Trees would have been playing ten as well, I'd say, with Danny Cipriani gone off and um, Banahan coming on. So one more change as well. They're bringing on a uh, Jamal Ford Robinson, yes. uh, a, a former Bristol player yeah. who I imagine you know quite well from the last year or so. He joined in the summer. Yeah, he, he actually left Bristol and went to Northampton and um, has mo- has come back now to the, the West Country. He's uh, he's a local boy in Bristol and uh, wanted to get back this way. So he's um, he's been starting a, a good few of their Premiership games. Um, Balman's been injured, so as I said earlier, they've they've had a couple of injuries in the front row. So he'll he'll be well used to um, the combination that he's in with at the moment. And Fraser Balman, a very popular man, as he comes off the pitch and collects the jacket and takes his seat. Um, the sun coming out now for the final yeah. few minutes here. Yeah, big big scrum. Connacht with a scrum five meters out, just to the right of the posts. As they drive their way towards the line, they have a penalty advantage coming again, and we're going to stop and and have this penalty. But all the while, it's something I'm sure Gloucester will be happy enough to do because yeah. as these penalties, as much as they're giving away a penalty, it's shaving mm-hmm. another 30 to 60 seconds off the clock each time. Yeah, it's um, it's a tough one because obviously Connacht need to score, but they're three scores behind, so um, you need to try quite quickly and. Um, Jared Butler should probably go up talking to the referee about cutting the time, but um, with the breakdown in language, that he might struggle there a little as well because obviously we have a French referee here today. Just a reminder, all our rugby coverage here on Off the Ball is brought to you in association with Vodafone, team of us, everyone in. Just a few minutes left here at King's Home where it looks like Connacht are going to fall for the second game in a row in the Heineken Champions Cup trailing 32 or 26 points to 10 against Gloucester. But they do have an attacking option here. That scrum goes out and Cole Godwin has it in his hands and he has a little bit of space if he can work his way towards the try line. But Gloucester scramble away and stop him in his tracks. Stephen Cairns gets on it and puts it out to Jared Butler who begins his drive towards the line but he's driven backwards again. This big Gloucester pack are showing their strength the longer this game is worn on. Ulton Delan try to carry. Or his own Masterson, I should say. Delan now over supporting and he picks it up and pops it out. But Connacht's not getting anywhere closer towards this try line. Stephen Kearns dummies and goes out right. And in the end it was spilled and they've moved backwards another few metres. Kearns goes to the right and Owen oh, Masterson and that looked like a high tackle. Another penalty advantage coming for Connacht. Just a bit of a seatbelt tackle around the shoulders. And the whistle's blown, and we are coming back for that. And a penalty to Connacht, yeah, we, 16 metres out from the try line. Connacht got a bit of go forward, um, trying to tie in some numbers, and a um, bit, bit of a lack of communication. It looked like Stephen Kearns took a few steps with the ball and didn't um, didn't know who he was hitting, and um, that allowed the defence to get up and spooked uh, spooked Stephen Fitzgerald, and then hit the balls hit the floor. But um, Seepel tackled and. Uh, Connacht have decided to go to the corner. Went for scrummages the last couple of times, but this one just a bit further out towards the towards the touchline. So Connor Fitzgerald has sent it out right on the right on the five meter line. Jared Butler goes up and takes the line out as they try to set up a mall. But Gloucester doing well to defend this. Connacht not moving too far just yet as they spin off and the ball goes to ground. And a this, ruck is set up. Stephen Cairns gets it outside now. As this huge space out here, if they can get the ball across, good carry. And they get by towards the try line. Connacht just inches away now. They would still need a second score though if they were to get a losing bonus point out of this game. Oh, and they reach towards the line, and we're going to go to the team. Oh, oh is it a it. double movement? Maybe he's, he's given the line. It, yeah. He's given it. Oh, I thought for a second there he'd given a penalty to Connacht, but the arm is up. Yeah, he's given the and try. Connacht do have a try. Just coming up to three minutes to go. And the try scored by Quinn Rue. Ah, uh, no, I think it was Dominic Robertson. Oh, it was Robert, Dominic yeah. Robertson McCoy is the man running away with it. And I think, is he going Is he going to the TMO again? He's walking, walking over towards Ooh. this. I'm not sure if he's grown to that. Yeah, he reached out. Yeah. It looked like... Reached from for the line. And the ball did look like it bobbled yeah, it just did. as it was hitting the line. and initially it looked that way and then he obviously the referee mustn't have seen it and he's given it but we just saw it. yeah Ooh. it's a tough one to call 
there was certainly pressure as he touched it down. It just possibly rolled on a little bit forward. This is the the ref uh, the ref cam as we're watching it here. See how good a view oh. Pascal Gozer got on it. But whatever happens, Connacht are going to need to get a score very, very quickly if this is given. This brings them back to... This would bring them back to 26-15. The routine conversion for Conor Fitzgerald would make it 26-17. They'd be nine behind. No and try. No try. No try as Kings home erupts. And I think the, uh, the Gloucester fans know they're safe, uh, safe and sound now. They're going to be picking up the maximum five points, it looks like, because with three minutes left to play, they keep their 16-point lead. 26-10 in front against Connacht. As those Connacht players have to have to jack, uh, jog back forward towards the five metre line. And very quickly while this uh, scrum is taking place, we're going to hear from another uh, Premier League ground. We're going to go to Villa Park for a goal between Aston Villa and Leicester. Tom Gale. Aston Villa nil, Leicester to Kalecci in an acho. He provided the assist for the first. Now he's got himself on the score sheet. This time, James Madison whipping the ball in dangerously from the left. The Nigerian got the run across the two Villa centre backs and tapped in from close range. It's Aston Villa nil, Leicester two. Today's attendance at King's Home: 10,875 people packing in to watch this game, as, and most of them, I'd imagine, Gloucester fans are going to go home quite happy because their run of five defeats in a row looks like it's going to come to an end. 16 points in front here with just two and a half minutes left to play. Gloucester just working through a couple of short phases inside their own 22, just winding down the clock as Callum Braley calls for his forwards to go outside him towards the right. We're just controlling the game here now, just winding down the clock, as you said. And... Braley preparing to kick Tom uh, Tom Daly charging forward as Cole Godwin takes it and is going to have a have a cut here and a counter attack and bounces off uh, Jamal Ford Robinson and works his way up five meters short of the 22. Peter McCabe now on the ball, a late addition to the squad after uh, Matthew Burke had fallen sick. Dominic Robertson McCoy, whose whose potential try was chalked off just a couple of moments ago. Puts it out to Tom Farrell now as Connacht send the ball over towards the right touchline on the far side of the pitch. Moving back in from the left, Kyle Godwin now. But Andy Friend's side still just 10 metres inside the, the Gloucester half. Alton Delan with his hands on the ball, but he's going nowhere as well. As a couple of Gloucester players get in over and it's some scrambling possession for Connacht to get a hold of, but they do get it into the hands of Kyle Godwin. With just over a minute left on the clock. It looks like Connacht are going to be welcoming Gloucester to the sports ground next week with a huge task on their hands if they're to have any chances really of getting through to a quarter final. You'd realistically think they're going to be have to be needing a bonus point victory next week and they would probably need a big victory, two victories really against uh, against Montpellier and Toulouse and one of those would have to be a big one. Yeah, it's um, <clears throat> it'll be interesting to see what teams both uh, both sides go with next week obviously um, Gloucester as we talked about ha haven't been hitting their straps in um, in the Premiership and this is their first well yes it is their first win of the uh, of the Champions Cup and they've got um, Worcester which is a derby game here for them at home um, in the week after so it'll be interesting to see and then they've got Northampton obviously who uh, who Linster beat quite comprehensively yesterday but it'd be interesting to see if they travel strong to, to the sports ground um, if Connor can get a win then they're back in the hunt again but um, it's probably uh, going to be a tough ask to, to qualify but I know at home Connacht will want to put out a good performance and um, put get a win under the belt before the, uh, the derby games and they are going to be going home empty handed because the clock has slipped into the red here Connacht looking to go away though with one last try before the end of this match. They are camped on the Gloucester line, going through some phases as they pick and go and send another one and get to within an inch or two of the line. And it looks like Scored, Pascal goes yeah. the air, is given a try. And Connacht are going to have something to come away with, not in terms of match points, but the final action of the game is going to be a Connacht try. And it looks like it's Quinn Rue was the man to get a touchdown. 
Yeah, but not, do, not too much emotion on the face of those Connacht players just slowly walking back towards the halfway line because they know this game is over after it, Conor Fitzgerald's conversion. That was a big play about seven or eight minutes ago when Owen Masterson went through the middle and if he could have linked up with, uh, um, with the number nine, uh, Stephen Kearns on his outside, um, it could have been uh, an entertaining six or seven minutes to go, but um, ultimately uh, Connacht have fallen short and... Um, Gloucester were very clinical while uh, Cole Godwin was in the bin. I think they scored two tries and um, they they really put them under pressure there. So it's um, it's a game of what ifs really. Connacht probably in the whole didn't deserve to win, but um, could easily have come away with something in this game. Yeah, and that's the final action of the, of the game as Connor Fitzgerald strikes the conversion between the posts. The full time score here: Gloucester 26, Connacht 17. Connacht going home empty-handed ahead of the uh, the second round of games against Gloucester on Saturday next week in six days' time at the sports ground. And John, your overall thoughts on the performance and results? Yeah, it was a good game, um, especially the first half. Uh, a lot of a lot of attack and rugby. I think uh, Connacht will be a little bit disappointed to have conceded the four tries. Um, as I said, the the game management in the in the second half by Danny Cipriani kicking Connacht back into this corner forcing them into a few turnovers um, in here ultimately led them to getting the two tries while while the man was down and just smart clever play um, I think Connacht will be a bit disappointed that they allowed them to um, to beat them on the edge a couple of times and it, it is difficult it's got, they've got some really good uh, ball carriers up front Gloucester and they looked a little tight at times which um, which allowed them to get to get a bit of width on them and try and beat them on the outside but um, by and large I think We've been served up a good game, but I think Connacht will go home a bit disappointed um, in terms of the result. Um, I think probably Gloucester on the whole deserved their win, but I think it, it could have been a lot tighter and they could have got, um, if Connacht had been had um, got some of their scores and probably a bit more ruthless could have could have been there, thereabouts. 26-17, you think the scoreline reflects the, the performance? It probably does, yeah. It, it probably does. I think um, at times some of the, the scramble D from Connacht was exceptional and um, it looked like a few times that the, they were going to break them down and some huge turnovers, um, especially in the first half. Uh, John Porsche got a, an intercept which could have um, could have went either way. It could have been a try on the other side and then obviously Danny Cipriani scored one, um, which will, will have disappointed Jack Carty immensely. But I think um, by and large it was probably the fair result. But... Um, Sometimes you, you look back in these games and you think, well, the fair result might have been that, but we could have got something else out of it. Is uh, I suppose, is, is there, are there positives for Andy Friend to take out of the game heading into a short turnaround now, six days away at the sports ground against Foster again? Yeah, I think they'll, they'll look back at it and they'll, they'll, um, they'll fix their, their issues in D and they'll, they'll be very disappointed to concede four, but I think attack we saw that they, they are able to break them down they've gone through the middle of them a couple of times and they've put them under a lot of pressure so um i think the couple of issues with their line out both sides had and if they can fix them keep the pressure on and um gloucester won't like the sports ground and uh, the week before christmas i'm sure the players not will many be, teams do no no <laughs> um the week before christmas i'm sure the players will be looking to get back into good results and um before the the interpros come so yeah they'll be Devastly uh, disappointed. Big Connacht uh, crowd here today. There was a lot of them in uh, Ashton Gate yesterday watching the Bristol game and caught up with a few of them afterwards. So um, they'll want to make amends for this. And speaking of Bristol, before we finish up, things going well for you so far. Uh, good on the field. Results going well at the the right side of the Premiership table, but also off the pitch as well over the last couple of weeks. Some very exciting times for Bristol fans with Semi Randrandra arriving next season and Charles Piatow secured on a new contract. Yeah, it's um, things have been going pretty well so far. Obviously, it's very early doors yet. We, we're, um, we've got a lot of rugby to play. It's obviously in a World Cup year. Uh, it's not like the Pro 14. We didn't play at the start of the season, so we, we've actually only five games played. So it's it's very early doors yet. But um, yeah, we're up up there with Northampton at the moment, and um, we're we're flying high. But look, we, we it's a long season, and um, the one thing about the Premiership and looking at today's game. Gloucester are a good time, are a good side, and um, they've only uh, they've only won two games, so it's a competitive league. But um, 
but look if if we're there in another two months then we'll start thinking about the what ifs but at the moment we're just concentrating um, on doing well and uh, getting a couple of more results but um, yeah look it's exciting times Semi Rodriguez is arguably one of the best uh, players in the world at the moment and to to have him coming to us next year and to, to be working with players like that is is a phenomenal opportunity for me and, and uh, very exciting times for, for people in, in Bristol. Well, very best of luck with it, John, and good luck in your new role as well next season as uh, moving in as forwards coach. But that's where we're going to leave it for now. We, you will be able to hear a little bit more from John on offtheball.com later on this evening. I'll speak to him in the next couple of minutes. But uh, from here at, uh, at King's Home, where it's been a disappointing afternoon for Connacht. They've been beaten by Gloucester here in the Heineken Champions Cup by 26 points to 17. Off the ball on News Talk. It's Christmas party time and the Lidl elves are <laughs> Settle the heads now, lads. Throw in a party for all their friends. The spread includes delicious duck spring rolls, just 2 19 There's even a chocolate praline dessert, only 3 19 And you couldn't forget our stunning salted caramel profiteroles, only 129 I'll call around for a while, lads, but I work in the morning, okay? Lidl, more for everyone this Christmas. Thinking of a new car for the new year? On Dundeal, it's never been easier with Ireland's widest selection of cars from trusted dealerships. Whether it's warranties or monthly finance, we have every option available.